You are listening to a Dynamic Works Productions podcast. This show is available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio Network, and many, many more podcast services around the world. You can find all our content, music, videos, books, podcasts, and more on our website, www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Have questions, comments, or concerns for us? Head on over to the social tab on www.dynamicworksproductions.com if you'd like to talk to us. Now, on with the show. going on everybody welcome back to another episode of the fork in your ear podcast i'm your host as always author podcaster gamer occasional streamer when my pc isn't having a fucking meltdown (laughs) tim ka trotter and joining me on my right on your left because he refuses to flip the mirror on the goddamn stream (laughs) is the one the only (laughs) the nadiest of foos nate foo I i enjoy looking away from you on the stream sorry it's just how it works blame skype I don't. Don't, don't I sigh at you. me. Don't sigh at me. This is not me. <laughs> at least my shirt's the right. You can you can tell that it's a Spider Man shirt. Oh in the stream. yeah, my 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 B is backwards. Yeah, whereas you're just backwards. <laughs> One of us is correct in this stream, and the other is just backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I blame Skype for this. Fair enough. Um, oh man, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this this episode. Holy that was oh shit. man. I heard old man. I'm like, wow, really? You're just cutting me deep right now, huh? You gotta you gotta adjust your hearing aids because you're oh. hearing things wrong. Oh, you're hearing wow. things wrong backwards too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, you could have them. They could be hidden underneath that those earmuffs. Like I don't know. You know. No, I mean, they're don't, not. Don't try to don't try to prove something. I'm not saying they're not needed. Anybody who's watching. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and spin because <laughs> all of the topics got a lot of a lot of juice in them this week. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. We have landed on air which is fantastic because that's video games oh yay my oh my my oh my has this been a week for video games well for Um, for yeah for you nintendo fans sure well and for everybody and their mother and their dog and their uh black salem cat from sabrina the teenage witch (laughs) playing hogwarts legacy right now (laughs) yeah well (laughs) oh Hang on, we just got a text from Daniel. He oh, says the it's... stream has no audio. Oh, he is correct. Hold on. Yikes. There we go. Yep. Oh god. Oh, because I ha- I don't have my Twitch player muted. That's why I'm hearing the double echo. Yep. Sorry, Daniel. I appreciate welcome, you. Welcome into the chat. Uh, I appreciate the. Uh, the... <laughs> that oh, would have been interesting because if you wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, this would have been a completely mute. Um, yeah, it would have been live just stream like, and it would have all it would have <laughs> all come out. It would have been it, fantastic. Know, yeah, the podcast is going to come out fine with terrible. audio. Uh, send shoot us some questions there in the chat. Just there, your fr- there, friendly Daniel. neighborhood mod. Thank you, sir. Wait, how do I actually pull the chat up? I have the pop out <sighs> player. I need to do 
Don't judge me. What a rookie streamer. Judging. Feel judged. You should be uh, judged. Oh, nope. That's the second pop out player. I need the not pop out player. Yeah. There we go. No, There's the the, the the rookie move was all my fault because I'm the one actually in control of this uh, production. So. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Oops, my bad. I was gonna try right. to hit is, you with the Nvidia broadcast fake eyeball movement. Oh yeah, but for whatever reason, Skype that. is just like it's like no, I I don't want that as an input. Okay. It's well, weird. Uh, just just so you know, uh, it's weird. Daniel, hit us with uh, any any questions for all the topics you got for us from gaming and life stories. All the stuff questions are always appreciated here. Or hop in the Skype call. Just saying. Yeah, or hop in the Skype call. That chance of that, though. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet has been laid. <laughs> right. I dare you. You don't I have to, dare you you don't to, even get have to be on call. camera. You don't even have to be on camera. Right. Yeah, yeah I don't even know how that would but anyway. work with us. Um, so, yeah, what were we saying before we were... Reminded that we weren't saying anything. A lot anything. of video game shit happened this week. Yes. A lot of video game shit happened this week. If you're a Nintendo uh, fan. Or a Harry Potter fan. Mm -hmm. And then that's not counting, uh, of course, the stuff that we barely covered two weeks ago, which is, you know, the Dead Space remake. And, uh, you know, so far, 2023 kind of been lit mm -hmm. for, for video games so far. Um, this week we had, uh, we had a Nintendo direct, um, that I live streamed, mm -hmm. um, actually thinking that it was just going to be, it was probably going to be an okay direct and stuff. Little did I know that Nintendo was going to come out with that big swinging <laughs> dick energy of, they're like, oh, hey, remember us, Sony and Microsoft? That We're is the market leaders. It. Just yeah <laughs> we're the fucking market leaders by the way right <laughs> you all wish you had what we had in right. this direct <laughs> like i yeah, and, I, and I've, I've watched i've watched the announcements i've watched everything and i'm like okay cool yeah mm -hmm. like this is exactly what i expect and then nintendo came out and said so here's all the games and it was what i expected for the most uh -huh. part, like, oh, okay, we're going to show this, we're going to show that, oh, here's some new IPs, and here's some other stuff. What I wasn't expecting was the um, the release date cadence, as in, like, at the yeah. end of the stream, you can download and start playing. Yeah, there was a lot of, like, um, well, it was really peculiar. So when they announced, they announced it, like, a week ago, mm -hmm. and then a day before it went live... They had a little, you know, white and red Nintendo color scheme right. thing. There's like tune in tomorrow for mostly games that are coming out in the first part or the first half of 2023. And I was like, that's very specific. Sure. Nintendo doesn't really do specific. Right. So that's OK. And this was February. So it's like what's coming in the next four months? Little, little did we know. <laughs> little did we know <laughs> that they were just going to come out. Swing and big like, D, as you would say. Oh, my God. All of the big Ds. Like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even keep up with my sure. elation throughout the entire entirety of the stream. Um, I'm going to pull up a list here just so I don't forget some of the smaller titles. Uh yeah, and, and and just for clarity's sake, like I'm not a Nintendo fanboy, so I I literally watch this for the sake of this podcast. Like, okay, I I'm gonna have to talk about this. I might as well tune in and see what's going on. Well, and also, man, talk about showing how it's done. Right. Not not just not just the quality of the announcements, but just like this is 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Here's like a hundred games. <laughs> right. Like. <laughs> It was like bap 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 bap. Yeah, like I'm 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 used to seeing these things. Let us just unload. I'm used to seeing these things just for the sake of following them. And and again, it was like because I really have no vested interest in Nintendo for the most part. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to watch it because I'm going to have to talk about it. 
on the podcast. And I was just like, wow, this is how it's done. Like, this is how it's done as an ex, as the resident Xbox wonk in the group. Like I saw their, their presentation and I was like, okay, that was, I mean, that was good. That's about what you expect from the industry. And like yeah. Nintendo came with the wood. Yeah, um, they kicked it off uh, strong, uh, in my opinion, as as a as a Pikmin fan. Mm -hmm. They kicked it off with Pikmin Four, uh, with both gameplay and release date, right? Um, which is really one of the few things that they even announced at this thing that wasn't technically within the first half of twenty twenty three, right? Uh, Pikmin Four is coming out on July twenty first. Uh, looks like we have new playable characters. There's a weird two legged dog shroom thing now now correct Par me if i'm course. wrong but what i what i know of pikmin i was not expecting this style of gameplay that is 100 percent pikmin gameplay okay so pikmin is a is generally a 3d top down rts with a your an alien in a honey i shrink shrunk the kids kind of environment okay and you have these weird little carrot creatures called pikmin mm -hmm. hence the name and you pick them and you are a on the ground you're controlling it yourself commander controlling these troops or large large groups of pikmin sure okay and you throw them and they're color coded and they do different things in the environment the red pikmin are resistance to fire the blue pikmin don't drown the yellow pikmin can conduct electricity right. and they've added more and more colors over the years um but they've also uh added in pikmin th uh, pikmin 2 they added um versus which was lovely some of the best time i ever had in a split screen mm -hmm. versus rts and then in pikmin 3 they added co-op um which I managed to finagle my wife to play a little bit of <laughs> uh, on the uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which was a report of the Wii U version of the game that nobody bought because nobody right. bought a Wii U. Because Wii U, yeah. Um, and so since we don't have ports of Pikmin 1 and 2 on the Switch, it is a, it is a touch curious for the Switch crowd, so Pikmin 3 must have sold very well for them to have greenlit um a fourth one mm -hmm. um yeah pikmin 4 uh looks good um for the first time in the series we have uh it's always been in 3d but we have a perspective change to a right. more over the shoulder behind yeah behind yeah over the shoulder kind of perspective um and that a, will a be tomb raider. a welcome yeah tomb raider camera well, that'll be a welcome change, mostly because we haven't had a perspective change. Uh, the original first two games were on GameCube, and the rumor was to get hundreds of Pikmin on screen. You had to do a top-down perspective, sure. or just for draw distance, so you're not rendering too much of the environment to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Pikmin's great. It's a fantastic game. Uh, uh, like I said last summer, a game that blew my mind in the uh, indie game category of the year uh, for 2022 was uh, Tiny Kin. Mm -hmm. It is the exact same kind of gameplay. So for those who don't have a Nintendo console um, and want to check out a Pikmin type game, Tiny Kin is it in spades and a plum. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also available on Switch too <laughs> if you want another Pikmin type game since nobody's fucking done one until them. Um, at least recently, there were some games back on 360 called Overlord, where you're like a demonic dude and you had some literal like hellfire imps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, also very good. So they, they've done, people have copied the console RTS formula of Pikmin twice to my knowledge. Right. Uh, but yeah, Pikmin four, July 21st. Um, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the article I'm reading is not in the order that was shown in the um, in the direct. So I'll just 
it into what I have here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Digital Trends. Uh, Splatoon 3 has an expansion pass. Uh, it's coming uh, soon. Soon, I guess. right. I don't, I don't have a date, and they were showing both more multiplayer stuff and then some kind of weird new story, single-player thing called Side Order. Um, this feels like a broken record because it didn't actually come out last year, but Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is finally actually coming out. Uh, it's coming out in April. Um, it was originally supposed to come out in December 2021. Um, and then it got pushed back to March. And then it's a game called Wars, and it's about nations invading other nations. And then the Ukrainian war happened, and Nintendo mm -hmm. was like, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Just, just no. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, reboot camp coming april 21st um i'm honestly curious to see if like they actually just kept the developer on it for a year or if they just like we already have cartridges printed and it's just been sitting on a shelf right for a year <laughs> we'll see i guess um this was much rumored but big surprise we got both of them in the same day it's live now as we speak uh, Nintendo Switch Online has Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, and Game Boy Advance games available. Uh, specifically, I say this for the Nintendo fans out there, uh, Nintendo Online, the basic one, has Game Boy and Game Boy Color, while Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Plus, I think I right. got all the words in there, <laughs> uh, has the Game Boy Advance games. Um, I played around with them a little bit. Um, Game Boy games are just a touch jarring on a 65 inch screen and or let alone a seven and a half inch handheld screen right. just because the original Game Boy screen was literally an inch. Right. Inch squared. Uh, so that's was it, was it's it a little really weird. Small? Yes. Wow. Yes, it was. But, you know, this is back then. That's what we did. Right. Didn't feel that small um, back in the day. Yeah, Game Boy Advance screen felt like a like a giant thing. It was like two and a half inches, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe three. Maybe three and a half. I don't I don't remember. Um, but for those curious, the launch lineup for these with more on the way, including some really good ones. Uh so you can play the original Tetris, Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening TX, mm -hmm. Gargoyle's Quest, Game & Watch Gallery 3, Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare, which is a real curious, curious game. It barely ran on the Game Boy Color back in the day. I know, because I played it a bit. And I was like, I don't know what's happening on this fucking screen. I booted it up again just because I was curious. I was like, oh, I remember fucking around with this thing. Um, Just because the idea was... We're going to put a full on survival horror game with like colored backgrounds and we're going to somehow cram it onto a Game Boy Color with like right. rendered backgrounds. Didn't work then. Doesn't work much better now. <laughs> <laughs> Did they so release any of the uh, TMNT games? Shit. Um, I don't think so, considering they're all available in a collection. OK. All the original TMT games. I think they have a volume one and a volume two, so they're two separate okay. purchasables, but they're all out on all the consoles now. Gotcha. Uh that happened, I think, just before your lovely um Shredder's Revenge. New retro game. Right. Uh, yeah, Shredder's Revenge last last summer. Um so yeah, you got the original Metroid 2, Return of Samus, Warrior Land 3. Kirby's Dream Land, which I have much fond memories of mm -hmm. on the original Game Boy. Um, and then they also teased in kind of like a little bit of a video that Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons Pokemon trading card game Kirby's Temple to Crumble will come to the service in the future. Uh, meanwhile, Expansion Pass members got Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, which is like a remastered version of the original NES title. Mm hmm of super mario brothers 3 with kind of 16 bitter Better, graphics because yeah. it was for for it was a selling point for the game boy advance uh warrior war inc mega micro games which i encourage people to check out because they're funny they're they're fun they're they're good um 
Kuru Kuru Kurin, which is a weird puzzle. You're flying a stick that rotates through stuff and you're trying to avoid shit. Right. Simple premise, but it works. Mario Kart Super Circuit, um, which is a new Mario Kart game, but it's done in the style of the Super NES Mario Karts with Mode 7. Um I couldn't believe my my eyes when I saw this Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, which I still reference to this day as a fan fucking tastic JRPG starring Mario and Luigi. Right. Um, I say it's fantastic because it's like it's funny. Like I booted it up again and I actually forgot how funny it was. Like it starts with like well, Luigi for, hanging, for me hanging as, an, up. as an outsider watching the trailer. I didn't even realize that was an RPG. Oh, yeah, it right. doesn't really look like an RPG until you get into a random combat mm-hmm. encounter. Um, but it's funny. Like, the game opens with Luigi hanging Mario's clothes out to dry, and Mario's in a shower, and Toad walks in on him and f- gets freaked the fuck out because he <laughs> sees Mario naked. Like, I'm not even making that up. That's literally what happens, and it has, like, written dialogue about it. And, like, Toad, like, walks into a steamy shower and is like, oh! And his face is all red and he runs away and you hear mario go mama mia and it's like what the fuck is happening why is this in not this in the game? Mario very, movie it's a very funny it's a very funny game um but the combat is really unique in that it's turn-based but it's active right turn-based and what i mean by that not to confuse it with like a final fantasy or anything is like you have an a to attack but you like you have to time like Mario's jump to like land on it perfectly and it'll do like more damage. And so each move you have has like different button presses. So rather than like a menu queue of a bunch of different attacks, you're actively engaged with each uh, attack or tool that you would use in combat with some kind of button press to it, um, which is unique to that game i haven't seen it done in other jrpgs um right and it's fantastic and uh super star saga has like fucking like five titles in its series now or something crazy mm. uh, i only played the i only played the first two but i'm just saying if they want to dump that on me for a thing i'm already paying for i'm okay to give it a whirl again uh the big one on there though was the legend of zelda minish cap uh, which is an amazing uh game boy advance version of the classic top-down Legend of Zelda formula. Uh, its big hook is that you have a cap and you like shrink down to like Ant-Man size. Mm-hmm. And so you have worlds where you're like looking around at everything, but then if you shrink down, you could be like in the grass and stuff. Right. And they did this on a little handheld thing. Um, and actually it was in the original design doc. They had wanted to include this like micro world stuff in Breath of the Wild. Um but they, I don't know, they axed it for some particular reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they teased uh, future Game Boy Advance games like Metroid Fusion, which is another fantastic fucking classic. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Fire Emblem, uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity. And then this blew my mind because I'd been I'd been secretly crossing my fingers uh, for some kind of remaster of this particular series. Uh, it's Nintendo's long lost RPG series called Golden Sun, uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the best R- RPGs ever made. It's fantastic. It has wonderful world design, excellent music, excellent combat at the time, mind blowing visuals with like a combination of like they had kind of like a. Uh, like a. Uh, it has like a pre-rendered cgi kind of look to the stuff but in a good attractive way um with kind of its own sort of art style um i don't really know what else to compare it to um might not look as good now but Mm -hmm. at the time i remember getting that game being like this is the best looking fucking thing i've ever seen in my life um so really excited that uh, people will get a chance to play that because nobody's fucking been able to play that game. And for me, that's one of the few games where the fucking battery in my cartridge for that game <laughs> died. I've soldered on new ones for that particular game. So that should give you some idea of 
you know, the level you have to go to to kill a battery. Right. A particular kind of game. Um, this blew my mind. I've been playing it every single moment I have since. Uh, they were just like Metroid Prime. Right. Remastered. Out now. I, I like, saw that trailer. Uh, I'm like, well, goodbye, Tim. It's been nice knowing you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm almost done with the game. I'm in the last in the last part of the thing. I gotta collect the twelve things and then I can beat the last two bosses. Um but no, that made me so excited because um That made me a, excited. I I didn't play it, but I know how much you revere that game. So when I saw it being remastered. It's not even just me. If you go on Metacritic, it's well, one of the highest reviewed games I of all time. I don't care about Metacritic. I care about Tim. And Tim has said like if they ever remake this game, like I'm all in and they did. So and you should is, pick up this game. It is dummy. Good looking like. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like it wasn't like uh, so we we don't have a digital foundry on it because it just shadow dropped out of nowhere. Right. Digital foundry is like, fuck, we're too busy still trying to work on our, our Hogwarts legacy shit. We don't have time to do this Metroid yeah, no, Prime I, thing. I saw the drop and I'm like, um, wait, what hardware did that originally come out on? Came out on the GameCube. Right. And this is what makes me feel super fucking old. <laughs> 21 years ago. Right. <laughs> right. So to see that trailer um, and I'm just like, that that looks good. That looks real good. And so. So uh, we have a couple of technical specs from this. So I, I've, I've said before in the show, I follow this Australian guy who's stateside who makes games called uh, modern vintage gamer. Um, wonderful fella. And sometimes he does tech breakdowns and he did a tech mm -hmm. breakdown actually this afternoon of the game. Um, and from his estimation, being a man who has made many games and also ported things and done sort of stuff. Uh, it is his belief without any insider data that it is a port of the Wii version because they made a Wii version mm -hmm. of Metroid Prime uh, a long time ago of that source code forward ported to the modern uh, retro did, studios. Did game it engine. ever get released on the Wii or was it just something they were? Yeah. OK. No, no. So so to clarify, so Metroid Prime one and two were GameCube originals. Mm -hmm. Then Metroid Prime three was Wii. OK. And had, you know, waggle stuff to great effect actually and then a few years after that they did a like all packaged on a single disc sure. metroid prime trilogy collection and then they retro shoehorned um pun intended because it's made by retro studios uh sh retro shoehorned um the wee waggle controls into one and two um and then they also because they were on gamecube they added wide squeak wide screen wide screen to yeah one and yeah shut up they added widescreen to one and two retroactively um it's a fantastic collection but that was that was pretty much your only way to play that trilogy sure uh that came out in like 2006 mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. something like that it was, it was mm -hmm. a long time ago um but yeah so modern vintage gamer was saying um, it was his estimation that they ported the source code of the Weaver we port of it already, since that was already, you know, several years newer hardware to begin with, mm -hmm. and then forward ported it to their current Retro Studios engine, which is powered like the last two Donkey Kong Country games, because they've right. been doing that for Nintendo. Um, and he said that with some certainty because of something about the way that he saw how it was rendering things was very similar to how they rendered them in the Donkey Kong Country games. Sure. Um, the difference is they're it's running at 1080p, 60 frames a second, and looking like a fucking modern <laughs> ass fucking first person shooter that like it doesn't it doesn't look like shit. It mm -hmm. looks fucking fan fantastic and it looks fantastic even on a 65 inch freaking tv that yeah i mean so i'm <laughs> i've played 90 percent of the game at this point like i said i'm at the 12 uh chozo artifacts I, i'm gathering from what you're saying that you're you're immensely pleased with 
this rendition of Metroid Prime Remaster? It's as close to a perfect remaster as I could have never dreamed because <laughs> in the best case scenario because Nintendo doesn't do these level of remasters sure they don't if you look at uh Wind Waker HD Twilight Princess HD even Skyward Sword HD mm -hmm. they're just up res ports with some control rejiggerings like sure. it's nothing fancy it's nothing like oh hey let's redo every single drop of the graphics and make it look goddamn pretty and it's super cool because in the in the main menu um and i might i'm having old gamer brain here i don't if i maybe it was true but in the original i think you could unlock like an art gallery of like production art that they used for the game and stuff um and can, you still have that gallery nor deny that yeah uh, uh, yeah i know you don't know but i'm just saying um but in this one you have the original art gallery but then you also have the remastered gallery mm -hmm. so you can compare their production art and particularly the art in the world like they have like a section in their art gallery in the game where it's like oh we have this scene and it's like oh that's really cool art and they like put it in and then you can see like the remastered version mm -hmm. of the art that they were working off of. And it's just like. It's like they they didn't need to do this because the game itself was already a masterpiece. And now it's a fucking gorgeous, modern right. looking like if this is evidence of what a hypothetical metroid prime 4 which nintendo has told us that retro studios is working on is gonna look like mm -hmm. fuck <laughs> <laughs> for, for lack of you a know, better word and, yeah and, you know and and just to put things into perspective you know we're, we're talking about a gamecube game that ran at 60 frames a second back right. in the day it had like it had like 40 megabytes of ram and like 20 it had a really weird number like 22 oh. megabytes of video ram and so it, obviously here's, the switch here's something i'm going to say overall like in in like yeah. i was watching the uh the, this whole um nintendo direct and, and throughout the entire thing i uh, you know i think i commented multiple times like how the hell does nintendo do this with that hardware well and it, i and the right? other thing that's remarkable too uh, especially having played it, you know, very recently. Like, I'm almost done with the game. I've maybe got an, a couple hours left in the game. Um, is how fucking incredible the first game is. Mm -hmm. Because with a new coat of paint, um, some new control scheme, um, you know, it, it looks and feels like a modern game, but everything's exactly like gameplay wise it's exactly mm -hmm. as it was 21 years ago right and it's just one of those things of like man the game the game design and the the art direction of the original game are so fucking timeless that the fact we got this remaster right and it's and it's walking that line of well, I mean, I remake like I liken it back remastered. in the day, and you know, you're old enough to remember this. Like, you know, Halo, Halo came out, or was it Halo Two? Yeah, came out, and it was like you could get it on the 360. That was its first nope. or oh, Xbox, right? Yep. And Windows Vista. Nope. Halo Two. Not for many, 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 many years. I thought one of them was released at the same time. Was it Halo 3 that nope. I'm thinking of? Never. Nope. Hmm. I, gu I guarantee you, the release schedule on PC has been very problematic. Because there was, there so was, they had one, a, there was they, one Halo that actually pushed me towards, uh, back towards console. And it was that so, I needed to upgrade so, my PC. I, Halo 2 had an exclusive thing with Vista. Yeah. Okay. It had it had like three new maps or four new maps or something right. like that. Um 
and I want to say it came out a year after Halo 3 did on 360. Um, after that, there was the ill-fated Halo Online, which yeah, no. was a Russian thing officially made by Microsoft where they kind of lifted the multiplayer of Halo 3 and then they made a shit ton of new maps. No, I could have sworn there was a PC. Halo release that was, uh, release that was concurrent with console and PC. And nope, the first one would have been um, Halo Infinite. No, because CE it or not. CE came out on both. Yep, but not concurrent. And then two came, came out, out and two was a was was a technological leap that yes pushed me towards console. Yes. Do I need to pull up release dates? Because I'll pull them up. I mean, please do. Okay. All right. <laughs> Cause... We're doing a sign tangent here. Mm-hmm. All this Nintendo shit's got him. Because I could have sworn one of them released concurrent, and that, that was the reason I actually stayed on console. Like, the reason I got a 360 and not, a, and not upgrading my PC was, it was like, well, I could spend five six seven hundred dollars on a new pc or i could just buy a 360 for whatever the cost was yeah i mean 360s were kind of expensive back in the day yeah but not not new pc because i was at that point where it was a full motherboard swap new video card like i was at the the tail end of agp like I had bought the last, the you know, 7850 AGP card. Okay. You looking up the dates? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. It's more difficult than I would have liked. Yeah. Because uh, all the lists I've get are just like the game release sure. dates. Sure, okay. Not I mean, the platform like, release dates. The point, the point being is like... Again, what Nintendo is doing with the old games and remastering them. <clears throat> so the first Halo game, mm-hmm. uh, 2001, CE, right? November. Yes, CE. Then in July 12th, 2002, we got a Halo port for Windows um, that later came mm-hmm. to Mac mm-hmm. in 2003, December. One of the few games. So. You could play on a Mac. Yes, probably the only Halo game, actually, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, which is ironic because it was originally started life as a Mac game. Mm-hmm. Oh, Marathon. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Even Halo started as an RTS on the Mac. It was shown in a Mac world by Steve Jobs on a press conference. You can look this up. This is true. Um, Halo 2. Let's look at the actual fucking games. Uh, release. Halo 2. Of course, it was November 2003. <laughs> or no, 2004. It was announced 2003. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, ports there we go <clears throat> oh my god many years later february 2006 was the windows vista halo 2 game no really yep yep that's what it says okay and then of course uh the remaster of halo 2 halo 2 anniversary was in the master chief collection and Master Chief Collection was later released on PC. Sure, yeah. So it, it, it wasn't even day and date either. Okay, uh, I, I stand corrected. Um, Halo 3. Oh, that's kind of weird. That doesn't seem right. 
According to this, there was no Halo 3 PC version until the Master Chief Collection. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. Not counting, yeah. not counting the strange Halo Online thing. Right. That came out. No, that's absolutely so. true. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's only yeah. Only well, CE Infinite. CE and two were the only specific PC release, and then Infinite, and of course Master Master Chief Collection came through with the uh, remaster. Yes, I just didn't realize there was and that much delay. All the Halo I didn't games, realize but... there was that much delay between the uh, oh, yeah. console release and the PC release. Yeah, and I, I could like, probably I was, understand I was, why I was not about to put that virus of you know Halo Vi- or uh, Windows Vista on my PC <laughs> to play a video game. Sure. Um. <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> Metroid Prime Remaster. Yeah, it's out fucking now. Mm-hmm. Uh, digitally, if you want a. Uh, game card copy of it it's like uh, february 22nd right um but i'm told they're sold out as of today oh if you yeah if you want a physical like physical it, copy it, it, yeah everybody wants a physical copy they're currently sold out uh is what i'm hearing so good luck with that right other huge surprise because nintendo never ever ever does anything for cheap metroid primary master it's only 40 bucks okay what how <laughs> how why yeah um but uh you know all i can say to you people who've never played metroid prime since it's the first one it's the one to get into yeah uh pick it up play it um enjoy it for, for those Put looking for an easy yeah. way to explain how the gameplay is it's sci-fi zelda with a dash of doom and descent. Right. Yep. That's exactly what you're going to get. And in first person. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, they should make a sci fi Zelda game. I was like, they have. They've been making them. They're called Metroid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it's fucking fantastic. Um, and uh, one last thing for the diehards out there. And Nintendo and Retro didn't have to do this either with the remaster, but it includes every control scheme the game has ever shipped on from the original GameCube control scheme. And yes, you can plug in a GameCube controller and use it just like the old days if you really want to. Um, It includes a Wii-like control scheme. So if you split your Joy-Cons apart, you can use motion controls to move your camera around just like the Wii version. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... Of course, new for this one, it has a brand new uh, dual stick modern first person shooting control scheme, uh, which I've been playing on, which apart from 21 years of muscle memory and occasionally hitting the wrong goddamn button, that's not the fucking weapon switch button anymore, Tim. <laughs> the new control scheme's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, pick it up. It's amazing um they dropped uh an, another huge trailer for the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom uh it looks super dark there's presumably the main antagonist of the of the the game it's it's not shown but there's a dude saying you know lay waste to the whole kingdom leave nothing last left kill them all right uh link doing link things um, and then very curiously, and everybody on their internet in the internet has pointed this out. And I was I also when I streamed it live, I said it too. Uh Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom also looks like it's ripping surprisingly from a Microsoft game, <laughs> formerly a Nintendo game, mm-hmm. called Banjo and Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, uh, which has come up a couple times in the show. Uh, I say that specifically because when you look at this new trailer for Tears of the Kingdom, it looks like Link is assembling ancient vehicles of the car and gyro floating copter vehicle varieties. Uh, And it looks like they're things that you're finding out in the world and dragging them back to wherever and snapping them together and stuff with magnets and stuff. 
which is what you did yeah. in Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Lego Link. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so everybody's right to make that comparison because Microsoft slash formerly Nintendo did do it first, like in 2000 and sure, six, five, five, something like that. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Uh, we'll see how it 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 fares. Um, something that wasn't in the direct, um, you know, uh, Nintendo was the last holdout for this. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom will be. A seventy dollar title. Fair, um, fair. So it was not announced in the direct. However, when the pre order went up, everybody went, "What the fuck?" It's a premium <laughs> uh, to title. the point where uh, some people were complaining about that. Uh, I believe Best Buy was the first one to say, "Hey, if you pre order it with us and it was sixty, we're going to honor your 60. And I was like, "Oh, good, good for you, Best Buy. Good, good for right. you on that." Um, I don't think it's a huge deal, except for that exact specific situation of you pre-ordered it with somebody and the price got raised on you before mm -hmm. the game release was announced. Sure. Um, you know, games are seventy on Xbox now. Games are seventy and have well, been seventy on PlayStation. Are they seventy for some on Xbox now? now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can confirm. My Dead Space was seventy. It happened this year. They held out until the end of uh twenty twenty two. They had like an announcement of it like December 10th, uh, Microsoft did. They're like, we're just going to hold on through the holidays, but in the new year, letting everybody know we're switching to 70. Um, so yeah, Nintendo's officially at 70 now. That then feels about right. With their biggest title. Um, honestly, it's fucking Zelda. I, it sounds like a terrible shill, you know, cut off my own dick exercise. <sighs> but if they wanted to charge me a hundred fucking dollars for a new Zelda game, I'd sure. be like, I'm not happy about it, but take my money. Right. <laughs> kind of thing. Hell, if that Metroid Prime remastered had been $70 and out today, I still would have insta bought it. You know, having already played the game through multiple times and yet again. Uh, so Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it is reconfirmed that it is coming out on May 12th. Uh, the release date has not changed, which means that it's not going to slip. Um, barring some kind of something. Um, there's a collector's edition, which you're probably not going to be able to get because eBay, eBay people have already purchased them all. And they're going for like $700 on eBay because it's fucking Zelda. Uh, there's a new Link Amiibo that's also coming out the same day. Good fucking luck finding that, too. <laughs> uh, good luck. So... <clears throat> I freaked out when I saw this in the direct, um, but I want to put a little caveat on the, the way this this was, because the way it was announced was a little tricky. So we had a trailer for Xenoblade Chronicle 3's next DLC wave, which included a new party member called Masha. Uh, it's available in four days from this recording, February 11th, so February 15th. Um, and I freaked out initially thinking that they were releasing the huge expansion also on february 15th but the way it was worded and presented made me think within a minute of seeing all that stuff uh the character and the wave four which is the final part of the expansion pass which is the big expansion everybody no nobody knew it was coming but everybody knew it was coming kind of thing because that's how they've always done it with xenoblade um yeah, the way it was worded in the direct was weird because I thought they were both coming out February 15th, but it was really one of those. Here's the thing coming out wave three. Here's a preview of wave four coming out in summer. Right. And then they show you a cool trailer and I flipped my shit because it has the main uh, protagonist from Xenoblade Chronicles one and two next to each other doing shit which yeah, is what like, everybody fucking i saw the wants. trailer and i saw you got like extra hyped about something and i was like i don't oh understand. yeah i i splooged all over my pants i was like this is what i fucking want thank you for fucking finally listening. doing it yeah yeah um but no it was just a tease for part four coming later this summer no release date for that so okay that's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. 
but the way that they worded that specifically was really fucking weird um but uh yeah Dim Blade chronicles and their big expansion coming this year and all of our hopes and dreams are confirmed and then something that wasn't shown in the thing which was a little weird um i had to go onto the japanese twitter for the game and run it through a translate and then have it reconfirmed by sure. our english fans on reddit uh they said in their twitter that it's starring the two prot protagonists from xenoblade one and two but then also a third brand new protagonist and i was okay. like uh, okay Sh sure why not i guess um so other games that were announced um sega announced samba de amigo party central being released this summer for those who don't remember that that was a dreamcast game where you had literal digital macarenas a macarena beat rhythm game yep that's the thing it's coming back uh, a game called fashion dreamer was announced and will launch later this year <laughs> Uh, this was a big one for me. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania official crossover uh, content drop uh, comes March 6th. So real soon. Super excited for that. I'm right. down about it. I know you got a little bit excited about this. Uh, Bithel Games is doing a Tron identity game. Yes. Coming out in April. I'll, I'll take, first on Switch. I'll take any Tron game all day long. And it's a story plot driven sure. dialogue choice driven game. Yeah. And I'm like. With Sign the Tron up. legacy yeah. art style. Right. And I'm like, yep. I I don't care. Give it to me. I forget the last, <laughs> the, like the last Tron game that came out on Xbox. Maybe 360, so, but Xbox. I... You're both right and wrong. Right. <laughs> so it wasn't the last Tron game to come out, but that was the last big one because that right. tied into the Tron legacy movie, Tron Evolution. Mm hmm which is on my left over here, actually, which is not a completely terrible third person adventure jumping around Tron. Right. Game. No, it was uh, the one there prior was a, to that. Prior to that. No, not prior. After Tron Run came out on Xbox, PC, iOS, all of the things, and it's a Tron um i want to say it runner was killer app type of game no killer app that's way back yeah that's tron 2.0 mm -hmm. uh which was a weird pc game that at one point was considered canon and isn't and it did come out on, that, on the original xbox yes that's the one i was talking yeah. about and like my wife and i it's just further back just <laughs> love the shit out of that game yeah <laughs> very good um ghost trick phantom detective comes to nintendo switch this summer uh investigation focused rpg deca police was announced by level five with a, a 20, weird one 23 release window this is kind of notable because level five is kind of a big name jrpg mm -hmm. developer uh they have uh i have to fucking pull up their history so people know what the fuck they fucking did real fast I gotta I gotta step away for just a sec. We had I had a little uh, liquid accident here. So Oh. Did you did you become an older man? <laughs> no, I didn't piss my <laughs> pants. But I did spill a drink. So Okay. I, Fair enough. I gotta get some because hardwood floors. That's fine. I'm gonna keep going since we are live. Okay. I was gonna say I can go um, to a break screen, but yeah. Carry on. Yeah, so level, level five games people may be familiar with. Uh, they've done Professor Layton, Dark Cloud, Gene D. Arc, uh, a Dragon Quest game, and of course, uh, worked with uh, Miyazaki with Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Uh, so, those are just a handful of things. Um, so, while uh, Deca Police doesn't look like my bag of tricks, um, it's a level five game. So, it's going it's to be, be a good rpg banana origins was shown off disney illusion island uh, which looks to recapture the disney castle of illusion style gameplay with four player co-op with the current disney mickey and mouse art style uh, releases july 28th uh fire Emblem engage expansion pass dlc wave 2 will feature hector soren and camilla camilla's 
knows my girl in Fire Emblem. She rides a dragon. Uh, it will also include Krom and Robin and Baraka. And Wave 4 will introduce a new story content titled Fell Xenolog. Don't know why they're fucking saying Xeno in Fire Emblem. But if they fucking have Xenoblade crossover shit with Fire Emblem, I'm going to lose my shit. Um, Harmony, The Fall of Reverie, was announced with a June release window. Octopath Traveler 2 has a brand new demo available right now on Nintendo East Shop with a second demo coming later, and you can carry over your save progress. How about that? We Love Katamari Reroll, which is a remake uh, announced by Bandai Namco Entertainment, will be released on June 2nd. Katamari Demacy Reroll now has a free trial specifically for Nintendo Switch Online members. Sea of Stars, which is like a dope 16-bit looking JRPG, uh, has an August 26th release date with a demo right now unavailable on Nintendo Switch. Uh, Mega Strikers was announced. Don't remember what that game was. E-Train Odyssey Origins Collection was announced with a June 1 release date. Each game will also uh, include... Each game included will also be available separately on that day so if you don't want them all uh kirby's return to dreamland deluxe will feature a new maglore epilogue uh game so that's cool um with remakes or upreses and stuff getting some extra content mm -hmm. that's also getting a demo today uh, i tried to find the demo on day one of this it was not available when i looked uh, it may be available now so i'm not sure uh, master detective archives rain code launches on june 30th uh monolith soft rpgs which are the xenoblade developers prior to their purchase by Nintendo. Uh, Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean and Bait and Kaidos Origins are getting uh, proper remasters. Well, looks like barely any work done type remasters. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of them are coming for Nintendo Switch this summer. There's, uh, there's this remasters and there's ports, right? Yeah, this looks like the latter with some uprising. Um, I've been told by the Xenoblade community that these games are actually good if you missed out on them on the original GameCube. Uh, this is important because these are being published by Bando Namco when uh, Monolith Soft was working for them. Um, and this is important to purchase if you're a Xenoblade plan, fan uh, because this could potentially show that if there's money in remaking stuff that Monolith Soft has done, right. that the Xeno Saga and Xeno Gears games, which are not Nintendo, could potentially also get a remaster sure. and come to Switch, in which case the sister series to Xenoblade Chronicles could, could resurface again. Um, so that's why I'm pointing that out. Uh, Fantasy Life, The Girl Who Steals Time was announced and will be released later this year. I think it looks terrible, but whatever. If you're into that kind of thing, go for it. Sure. Uh, it looked like there was a CGI trailer for Professor Layton and the New World of Steam uh, coming out. Uh, so it was revealed that that's a game coming out next year. Um, a new Yoshi's Island course was shown and new playable character Birdo are part of Wave 4 of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Pass. Mm hmm uh, and then they had a civil reel, sizzle reel that showed Minecraft Legends, a game called Blanc, a battle, uh, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection is coming to Switch, uh, Have a Nice Death is coming to Switch, WBSCE Baseball Power Pros is coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, they had a sizzle trailer for Disney Dream Light Valley, um, which my wife made me go back and specifically replay that part twice, even though it only <laughs> you know, like twenty seconds. Okay. Um, and then Tales of Symphonia Remastered, uh, which looks like garbage, but I'm told that it's a fantastic game. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of that's kind of everything that was announced on the February 2023 uh, Nintendo Direct, and it was kind of a big deal because sometimes people or Nintendo fans show up to these things not expecting much. I showed up to it because we're in close proximity to a new Zelda game, and I figured there'd be a new Zelda trailer, right. which I was right. I did not think I would be granted with, oh, here's Pikmin 4, here's Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games right now, here's Metroid Prime Remastered right fucking now, here's more stuff for Zelda, 
And sure. uh, oh, by the way, yeah. Here's, if I, here's if I was looking Chron at the Chronicles uh, fix, <laughs> like f- from what I was looking at the chat going into the Nintendo Direct, like Pikmin Four seemed to be like everyone Pikmin, 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 Pikmin. So uh, a lot of people were anticipating Pikmin Four was going to be announced. Um, obviously, everyone was expecting um, the second, you know, the 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 trailer for the second Zelda. I was not sure. expecting it to look that damn good. Yeah, that's another thing. I think you said during the trailer, I think you typed, how does it look this good? Right. You're like, this game looks really good to me. <laughs> right. For the hardware it's on, it's it's just one of those, like, again, what is, like, Nintendo's got some secret sauce where, you know, again, the Metroid they Prime really remake. Um, what, what, what was it? Uh, no Man's Sky? Yeah, No Man's Sky looks pretty damn right? good on it, too. Like, there's a lot of games that just look really damn good for something you can hold in your hands and still have significant, like if, if something looks that good on a handheld, I it's like, okay, you can play for an hour and a half and then the battery's dead and it's going to be melting in your hands. Like there is something, I mean, there is some secret sauce. I can't, I can confirm because mm-hmm. the other thing I was going to get into. So my wife played uh Hogwarts legacy mm-hmm. today for four hours. I did Switch? not play the game. Nope. Because oh, okay. it's not out on Switch till July. Um, and it's not out on Xbox One and PS4 until April. Mm-hmm. So it's only out on the next gen consoles and high end PC right now. Uh, but she played it. I did not. I was playing Metroid Prime Remastered the whole time right. on my Switch. As you would. And I still had 50% battery after four hours. Right. It's, it's, I'm just, just like, just, I don't. It's um, absolutely crazy. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't, like. So Modern Vintage Gamer had a thing about Metroid Prime Remastered on Switch specifically, where he said, this kind of remaster shows people what is capable of uh, the, the Tegra X1 chip, which is from 2015. So it's super old dated chipset. Right. Uh, but it shows what a talented developer can do if it is the only target spec sure. that they're working with. Yeah, and, and this is um, something you and I have gone back and forth with many, 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 many times. When you can optimize for a singular platform, you can do mm-hmm. wonders with it. So Yeah. But it still amazes me. Like, again, you look at the spec and you just go, Hey, we're working with half the horsepower and we're making something that looks absolutely beautiful. And then you see something that goes cross cross platform between all of them. You just go, how does it even keep up? Like, you know, no man's sky being the perfect <laughs> example going, no, there's a release on this more powerful hardware. How, how do they do it? So kudos, I mean, kudos it just Nintendo. Goes to show yeah. that, you know, the switch while super old dated hardware and can be an underperformer in cross generation games. Uh, and speaking of that, um, one of the things that ran through my mind while watching my wife play Hogwarts legacy, which is a fantastic looking game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might add is how, like what I was thinking the whole time was, man, this game sure is fucking pretty, mm-hmm. man. There's a lot of animations and, and effects happening. And I'm like, how in the fuck is that going to work on Switch? <laughs> but given Switch's past history, you'll find we'll a see. way. You'll find a fucking we'll way. See. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I, we'll see. I'll, I mean, the I'll only, give credit the, where the credit's only real... due. Give, give, give all the console war, console war bullshit aside. Like, sure, they, they're doing something right over there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Speaking of, you know, uh, Hogwarts Le- Legacy, how is, like, what what's your take on it? Like, well, my take on it, having not played it. <laughs> well, having watched it. I mean, I don't know how invested uh, you are really, into. Really? Are you, are, are you really into the uh, Harry Potter universe? Oh, yeah. Okay. See, oh, I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I'm I, really I love, not. I love Harry Potter. So. Okay. Yeah, I, I I love Harry Potter. I love the movies. Uh, I think the Fantastic Beasts films are okay. They're not like super great mm-hmm. or anything. Some of the extended lore stuff's pretty cool. Um, 
I found myself picking my eyes up from my Metroid priming um, more often than I thought I would, because part of it was because uh, like this is really kind of the only day I get to spend with my wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were like, oh, we have these shows <laughs> and you're staring watch, at two different things. screens. Yeah, we have these things. And I was like, what do you want to do? And she looked at me and she's like. I want to play Hogwarts Legacy. Sure. And I was like, so. If I'm understanding you with this request. You want to play a game that I purchased. That I haven't started yet. Mm hmm. Do all the beginning stuff that you're going to spoil me on. Yes. And want me to be okay with it. <laughs> yes. And she's like, yes, very much so. <laughs> so, so obviously controversy aside, you like neither one of you are like none fucks about any of the controversy with uh, JK Rowling. I mean, as far as the controversy goes, because obviously there's a fuckload of it. Um, it's a stupid controversy for Hogwarts Legacy. Okay, yeah. Um, my work partner summed this up best of, you know, whether you agree or disagree with the statements that J.K. Rowling has mm-hmm. has said um, about communi- certain communities mm-hmm. or agree with which organizations she's supporting or not, the fact remains... She is a mega, mega, mega billionaire. Mm-hmm. And nothing you can do with your wallet's going to affect that. Right. <laughs> like, there's not a goddamn thing at the end of the day that you or I could do. Sure. That, that sure. And, that. and this is one of those, I like, I hate even bringing it up because we, we avoid certain things with that. But Hogwarts sure. Le- Legacy has such a, uh, I don't know, a, a stink attached to it that at least it, it it's at such least a needed, legacy attached yeah, to it and yeah. it at least needed to be addressed and and again the 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 separation of the art from the artist uh has been a huge topic um i have you know members of my gaming community from all walks of life that some aren't they're just straight up not playing it because of said controversy and some yeah, that are I think in it, that I think walk of life that are still playing I it because it's... they like they just they've had so much to attach themselves to the the uh, Harry Potter universe. They're just like, sure, like I I want to play this game. So well, I mean, uh, and I didn't know this until uh, some stuff was happening about it today. Mm-hmm. You know, now that it's out in the on the wild, is there's apparently there's a trans character in the game. Sure, um, it's in Hogsmeade or something. Sure. Um, I mean, the thing is, like. I don't feel any of the hate towards a game is justified from the perspective of so you're going to choose to die on a hill of boycotting a game that was in production for seven years by hundreds of developers who were just doing their jobs Mm -hmm. that only a small portion of the royalties of this are going to go to the creator that you're having a beef with. Mm-hmm. And of the things to die on a hill on, you're going to be upset about that. Not over like slave labor, Chinese games right. or, you know, right. uh, slave labor camps, making your cell phones or any of the other things that are like, Right. I'm going to go meet a, to meet I'm going to go on Twitter on my damaging. iPhone and complain about a game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's you know. there's a lot of performative outrage and there's a lot of like legitimate outrage. But again, we're it's, bringing it's we're bringing up the game, so I have to I have to address sure. the elephant in the and room, and that's fine. Right? And and just to address the, some of the elephants in the room, um, and I didn't know this. I read some articles. Uh, there was a popular uh, Twitch streaming couple that got brought to tears. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to like cut their stream or something because they got the game early because they were, you know, got given a key by WB Games. Sure. Um, that is actually um, my girlfriend reviews, uh, which I actually watch on YouTube. I actually watch them with my wife because my wife finds her very your, funny. Your girlfriend reviews? Um, yeah, yeah. So it started as this dude. Um, he did video game reviews. Oh, but the, then he started. The name is my girlfriend reviews. 
Yeah. Sorry. Then he started having like, his girlfriend. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, and then he started having his girlfriend. Yeah. Do game reviews, and sure. she they're very funny and they're very quippy. And she does two reviews. She has my girlfriend reviews where she reviews it for her, and then she has um boyfriend reviews which are her reviews of her boyfriend playing it and if your boyfriend sure. should play this game or like whether or not you're going to see them again mm -hmm. for the next six months or right. whatever like when hell. metroid She'll prime like, drops don't buy this yeah. game girls you'll lose your yeah. fiance or husband forever or whatever just the hell. do not buy your husband metroid prime oh too late <laughs> yeah happy valentine's day i told day. jessica yeah i told jessica that and my wedding anniversary no, i heard it same, i heard it in the background day. on your stream when when you're like honey metroid prime she's like oh son of a bitch yeah <laughs> it's fine i'm almost done with it it's fine um so yeah so to address uh certain controversies yeah. about it that started years ago mm -hmm. when the original game director for this game um he made i don't remember the exact comment so i'm going to paraphrase he made some comment that was mildly negative towards tra trans mm -hmm. and then twitter went on its witch hunt and then he got not game directed and got asked to leave the studio mm -hmm. which he did and he's been very vocal on twitter since the game's launch um and a different director took over mm -hmm. um so you know one could assume i think that was a couple of years ago that at least five years of his own work went into this game which is probably why he's been so vocal on twitter about it right. um you know uh that was where the original controversy started mm -hmm. um, okay then um jk rowling started um going against I guess well, the let's, Hollywood grain yeah, it, for trans stuff. She she got into um, the and for it and we're just yeah, you know, ripped the band aid off. She she became turf, right? T E R F. Sure. And I think if you act if anyone actually paid attention to anything she's actually written about all of this mm -hmm. stuff, you'd see that her perspective is purely from a UK British one. Sure. Where apparently by statistic there are many more uh detransitioning or um bad transitions that are occurring to mm -hmm. youths in the uk um and that that treatment of them um right. not the treatment treatment but the treatment that occurred after right. it, that's that's color with them, her, them dealing with the fallout right of, right right, of, right wrong and different that's what has what co colored her per perspective right so and i think if anybody actually paid attention to that instead of the rhetoric that's going on online like at any one point in time and she still says this to this day because i i follow her and i pay attention to what she says mm -hmm. you know she's never been anti-trans mm -hmm. what she's anti is people being anti-women and there's some weird shit going on apparently in the UK where uh, you can get away with rape if you say you identify as a as a woman or something like that. Right. And that's like into law or some shit over there. Right. And, I don't and, pretend to be an expert. I don't live in the UK. And that's delving but into I'm stuff saying, that's 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 delving into taboo stuff that we sure know, avoid from. I'm just saying right. based on the outside country looking in. It sounds like there's some really weird fishy shit sure. happening all over the place. And and my whole take on it and and from the communities that I associate with that have, have come up against or for this game is it's so much more a nuanced discussion than just blanket yes no. Um and for the people that are playing it that are enjoying it because they're fans of the Harry Potter universe, go ahead and enjoy it. Um uh, for those that are abstaining for it because of whatever you know whatever protest you want to make go ahead and do it and you sure know, pe people are allowed be to in protest both, be, yeah be in both camps but I'm don't yeah don't go and from what i've what, what i've seen now that the game has come out like people are actively going into that directory on twitch and attacking people mm -hmm. that are playing it and it's like oh yeah that's just not it's like why yeah why 
I get it. I get why you're I get why you're upset, but this is not. You know, the the thing that I see that doesn't make any sense to me is the the echo chamber rhetoric that I see on Twitter and on Twitch specifically for mm-hmm. this is like, you know, why are you well, supporting for a or thing against. for bigotry yeah. and hate and fuck you. And right. it's like, but aren't you propagating more hate by doing what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't I don't understand that. Now, I understand voting with your wallet. That's cool. Exactly. You have that right. Yeah. I'm saying right now the sales figures are already in. It don't fucking matter. Right. Like, this is one of the highest selling games of the year. Yeah. By far. Broken some kind of pre-order record. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. And, and, the, and, um, the, and the Harry Potter universe is well beloved. And one of the things I postulated sure. in one of my groups is like, what happens if, you know, a month from now it turns out like George Lucas is just like a genocidal maniac are you just gonna <laughs> yeah that's, like, that's the thing. are you just gonna walk away from everything you know from star wars indiana jones jurassic park yeah. right are you gonna walk away from it and most people would go no probably not yeah and that's so. and that's actually a super fair line of logic right to posit yeah to anyone who wants to boycott anything of a mega franchise you know um yeah and yeah again while so this anyway. while this is one of the few times we violate the, the the rules that we set out at the beginning of the podcast uh, it's it's one of those it's, elephants that it's it's a it's yeah. a gray area yeah i don't think it's there's a gray a, elephant there's a political bent with any of this statement yeah. especially because i'm not a uk citizen so i don't have right. any ground to speak on for whatever's going on over there um and it doesn't uh seem to be occurring over here or if it is i'm unaware of it it is um but anyways yeah. <laughs> hogwarts legacy from what i could tell That's of four hours yeah um damn <laughs> is my hands-off non-playing experience right uh it and looks that's, and like that's what i want to hear because apparently sounds... the reviews going on it like it's getting oh, yeah, review reviews bombed. are stellar no well, well, i've been hurt in yeah getting it review got... bombed so oh yeah 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 that happened after all the reviews were right. extremely extremely positive getting high eights and nines and in some cases tens yeah um and what was more interesting because i i watched a lot of reviews for this because we had reviews really early because they had like some weird like if you were like a super pre-order or something, mm-hmm. you got it like five days early. So people have been playing this since Monday. Right. Um, I watched some smaller YouTubers and stuff that are much more critical and do like longer, like 30 minute things. And the things that they stated, I was able to observe as true. Uh, something one of them said, um, shout out to uh, ACG and Maddie plays on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the closest I've seen a video game get to feeling like an amusement park. Okay. For your entertainment. Um, you know, once once they started um, getting kind of out of the tutorial area and the, like the beginning kind of like, you know, here's the kind of plot conceit that's pushing along your character in, in this world. Um, you know, Jessica was running around Hogwarts and touching things mm-hmm. there was always like an it it reminded me of like a really expansive version of like if anybody's played hearthstone there's shit on the sides of the screen for no reason and you can like click them with your mouse and they do right. shit while you're waiting for your friend to take their turn or whatever um you know there's globes there's things to touch and fiddle with and knickknacks and fidget spinners and all that kind of shit N- just littered throughout and the world wax and giving dogs bones uh-huh. yeah ghosts and moving <laughs> portraits and all kinds of stuff sure which uh the, like the character that is that is the wiz- wizarding world of harry potter like every nook and cranny sure. like yeah i mean i think the thing is is it you know kudos you know, kudos to the developers game, this- for like really leaning into that lore where every little nook and cranny could be a thing yeah. or could not be a thing. I think the thing that's most impressive about it is, you know, the game's been in development for seven years. Mm-hmm. And when I look at it, having not held the controller on it yet, it feels 
like the developer has put seven years of effort. Sure. Like I can see it other on than, the screen. Other than the uh, with the effects, the, the few people that the, I've 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 come across that said, "Wow, this UI for the character is a blatant Destiny ripoff." I mean, you have a movable cursor, but okay. <laughs> no, but like so the, what? the character in the middle <laughs> and stats on the left and stats on the right. It's and the UI itself is. I, I looked at that. And I'm like, that is a little familiar, isn't it? I mean, No Man's Sky has the same interface, so <laughs> not not <laughs> quite as spot on. But yeah, it's like, and again, no, because it, they've changed it over the years. And again, like I look at I look at something like that. If that's your criticism, so okay, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Someone found a, a, a mm. UI that worked, and they're yep. going with and it. And there's colored gear in this game, cool. so yeah. you know. Well, I mean, wait, <laughs> hold on. So Destiny has, you know, white, green, purple, or white, green, blue, purple, and gold gear. I mean, mm -hmm. how many other Diablo players have already Fucking followed? everything. Right? So. Fucking everything has that now. Yeah. It's like ingrained into us in the way uh, QuickTime events right. were a thing in video it, games, right. and then they got rid of them. <laughs> so. Um. But yeah, no, uh, everything I've can seen so far, uh, the story looks engaging and charming as hell. Sure. The voice acting is really cool. Sure. Um, the facial, facial capture and or animation, really solid. Um, whoever the fuck did the music is doing a really goddamn good john williams impression <laughs> okay <I'd be> <laughs> like just the music is like really it, like yeah it feels like the movies like very much so watch it watch it be a giacchini um, uh it's it's not it's a uh, it's it's a different thing i downloaded the soundtrack uh not too long ago but yeah like so the the official listing from itunes sorry apple music i'm old sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> says Chuck E. Myers, quote unquote, C, S E A. I don't know who the fuck that is. I guess that's their name. J. Scott Racozzi, Peter Murray, and Port Key Games Hogwarts Legacy is what it says on the official okay. thing. So I guess a group of people. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Well, good. good on um, you. But either way, the, mu the music's hidden out of the park, uh, the graphics look good. Um, I'd seen in pretty much all of the major critical reviews that the PC version and the PS5 version uh, had some technical failings of the loading variety. Um, I was watching Jessica play it on so, Xbox so Series I'm gonna, X. So I'm going to say right off the rip, like the PC version having some technical issues. I know. Wow. <laughs> like that's kind of screwed up. Classic. But PS5? Like, okay. Yeah. Because PS5 has just been the fuck PS5. Not I've that I want to. Not again. that I want to kick a you know kick a PS uh, a PlayStation when it's down, but that's fine. You can. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Other than the fact that the hardware finalization was rushed, and they've had to patch everything out. At the end of the day, you have an SSD that is faster than your CPU is capable of handling. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem because your CPU is always trying to play catch up forevermore. Like that's it's just. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> um, so I didn't actually see. It's so funny. So I've seen this in other reviews where they have commented on the PS5 and the PC version having loading hiccups. Uh, and they specifically cited uh, pop in in the open world. Big surprise. Um, but then more curiously, like they'd get like a little loading icon when they'd go to a door in Hogwarts. So like a little bit of loading in between rooms, presumably. Cool. Um, I watched my wife play it for four hours. None. Of I those. didn't see any pro. I didn't sure. see any of those on Series X. So I don't know. It could just be another situation like Dead Space where Xbox right. just happened to get the best version. Could be. You know, or it could be, you know, that the CPU could be a could be a combination of things. The SSDs, yeah. Could so be a combination of things shit. where, you know, like I, I'm sitting over here with my gig Internet. It doesn't matter what console I play on or platform yeah. I play on. So, yeah, it, it could be. It could be. 
Uh, either way, the game's Unreal Engine 4 based. Uh, sure. They have two more major consoles to release on PS4 and the Xbox family of consoles in April. Um, so I'm sure there'll be more optimizations and memory optimizations then. And then somehow in July, they're going to put it on Switch. We'll see. So we're an hour and 40 in on video games. Yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. We usually don't get that much um, play on that. Um, there, yeah. No, but I mean, you know, a lot happened this week. Right. There's the <laughs> Nintendo Direct, and then we had the, uh, the um, speaking of Halo, the Halo issues. Oh, shit. That's right. I posted all the Halo issues. Right. Okay. So. Do you where, think, where do you, well, let's, let's just, let's, let's cut down to the, the, the biggest issue of the entire thing. Do you think Halo is going to UE5? Fuck no. Why? Do I think side projects? Like, like, uh, you know, spinoffs are going to be in UE5? Probably. Yeah, because development issues, issues aside, because like apparently the big thing with, with the Halo development team is, you know, still working within the Slipstream issue uh, uh, engine. Slipspace, but yes. Slipspace. There you go. Thank you. So I want to I want to. So I posted a thing because Digital Foundry was talking about it. Mm -hmm. And Digital Foundry are generally really solid chaps who follow up on. Sure. On sources. Yeah, they're reliable and don't speak out of turn. Mm -hmm. Now, I preface that by stating that in their talk of the going ons with 343 having been hit with massive layoffs, right. uh, Joseph Staten allegedly having left the head of creative position of Halo Infinite. Even though his um, LinkedIn doesn't correlate that. Even though his LinkedIn or his Twitter do not correlate that and the last post he said was, uh, I'll get to everybody in a minute. I'm reaching out for all the people affected at 343 so that they can land in a new job. Right. Which is solid. Good, good, good mm -hmm. job. Um, Joe's a good guy. So, yeah, Joe is a good guy. Joe's the guy. Um, or at least one of them. Um, they've, they also iterated that, uh, hearing some scuttlebutt from some developers who were laid off the core problem with Halo Infinite and 343's management style and really a Microsoft problem is that they hired a ridiculous amount of contract work. Mm -hmm. As you and did. So in order to do that, they have to have those people. They have to bring them in. They have to have a team of slip space engineers teach them how to use their tools in their game to right. make the thing. Now, we know that part is 100% true mm -hmm. uh, because when Halo Infinite came out all over Twitter, there was all of these designers and artists who were like, oh, hey, I was a contractor. I built this base for right. Halo Infinite. Oh, cool. I'm glad to see that this one piece of work I did made it into the game. And everybody was piping up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that thing was mine. That thing was me. Oh, I did that thing. I did that. And they are not part of 343. Um, so while it's awesome that, that their work made it into the game, that is a problem. Because you have a proprietary game engine in which you're bringing in outside help for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known, if you ever look at the credits of Halo Infinite, that there's like a ungodly amount of this team did this right. this team did this this team did this which is so weird for halo infinite given the fact that halo 5 and halo 4 were made entirely in-house by all the people and generally released on time even if halo 4 and 5 had very mixed receptions either critically or publicly or fan base wise so i believe the contract work thing is an issue, but it's a top-down issue from Microsoft. And it's a top-down issue that only affects certain teams because you don't hear this with the Forza team or the Forza Horizon team, um, which are two right. separate teams. Right. You but don't turn, hear this with the Coalition. Is its own studio. 
you know, we don't hear this with the coalition team, the Gears of War developer. Right. Again, it's own you studio. Know, we, we don't we don't hear this with the many teams over at Rare. Right. You know, it's just something very peculiar from the top down. And maybe it's because 343 is the oldest. Uh, right. And the Microsoft Xbox game studio. And they're really like, for lack of a better term, they're a, a bungee spinoff. They are right. Uh, there is. I don't know about now, but at one point in time, there was a good chunk yeah. of X Bungie. Yeah, there. It was Bungie um, DNA that started three four three. Yeah, it was Bungie DNA and uh, some wizard programmers and mm-hmm. some other stuff. Um, so there's a lot of speculation going along because of an article written by Jason Schreier, uh, who formerly um, worked at Kotaku. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he now works at the Washington Post, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's kind wait, of a, no, not the Post. He's, he's kind of a destiny. He works wonk. at the you know, kind of a bungee wonk. No, who does he? He doesn't work at the Post. He works at not IGN. Um, not that. Well, there, hang on. I gotta get this right. Uh, Jason Schreier, Bloomberg. There you go. So he works at Bloomberg Games, and he uh, is known in video game circles as one of the last um, actual video game journalists who does digging and does exposés. Sure. Um, and he has ruffled many, many, many industry yeah, he's, feathers. He's, like Jason Schreier and Paul Tassi are the two people that I look at and like, if you write something... I'm going to give it a I'm I'm going to give it a look. Sure. Everything I've heard about Jason Schreier is he's a fuckhole. Yeah. But I would say at least 90% of the time his reporting tends to be accurate. Right. I have least questions about his report on 343 line. here. Yeah. Based on just looking at it myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, because he was he was the one who was shouting, um, you know, all these people got let go of three four three, which turned out to be true. Mm-hmm. But it was also part of a larger calling at Microsoft. Um, you know, he was saying that um, Joseph Staten was no longer there, which, at least publicly, not true. Could be. Um, and he was the one be, also yeah. stating that they were switching the game, all of Halo, to Unreal Engine five. And that the forthcoming Halo Infinite campaign expansion, which has long been rumored, uh, is axed. Now, there's some dirt in that story, for sure. But there's also some counter dirt against that. Right. Um, there has been public statement by 343 saying, uh, stating that they will remain the the heralders of the Halo franchise and will continue to make Halo games in the future. Um, There was an interview with Phil Spencer on one of the gaming podcasts Mm -hmm. where he has been quoted by saying, if we lose our way with Halo, then we've lost our way as Xbox as a company. And there was some ancillary thing after that, that, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that studio is in good shape. And that was before the layoffs and all this hubbub. So, OK, you know, uh, I'm of I'm you know, there are people saying fucking put Halo, put Halo to bed. Right. Give it a rest for 10 years. Come back to it with a new team or give it to another team. <coughs> now. Something that sony does and nintendo does that microsoft doesn't with their game studios is nintendo and sony sit share internal technology between game developers Mm -hmm. for a shared engine generally sure on their games you'll get your occasional unreal engine from both first party studios every once in a while meanwhile on microsoft's side uh rare is using unreal engine coalitions using unreal engine Mm -hmm. Uh, turn 10 and the horizon team are using whatever the fuck powers uh forza i don't know if it's got a name the the forza reality engine yeah you know you've got bethesda using their creation engine 
you've got doom id, ID, ID yeah. tech yeah id tech you have a ton of different internal engines mm -hmm. and also developers that are using off the shelf tools like unity or unreal right and i think having projects move to unreal is a good thing from the sense that you know you have a coalition who has been proven to be unreal masters uh, right uh, look no further than the fact that gears of war looks and performs beautifully on xbox and pc and they did the Mac matrix awakens demo for unreal engine 5 sure they clearly clearly understand that technology extraordinarily well sure and and vis at, visually sure <clears throat> um but there has always been that sort of secret sauce with a lot of these independent like homebrew yeah. engines yeah. that you can't like there's no way you can replicate that in ue5 sure you know, I, I don't I'm not of the opinion that there's no way to replicate it. I think specifically with what little I know about game development and being a coder and stuff, Unreal and maybe Unity works this way, too. I don't know. Unreal has the unique ability of you can write modules. Right. That tell un things in Unreal to not behave like Unreal things. Sure, but the, like, and the, the best the, the, the best the, example the secret, of that the secret sauce between between like slip space, you know, slip uh, slip slip space in particular is the peer to peer model and the gunplay aspect of it. Like peer to peer model, yeah. There is no central server for Halo or Destiny. Uh, Halo Infinite is run on servers. Halo Infinite is, but like, yes, before that, that's true. They run on peer to peer because that's how Bungie did. Right. Um, I don't consider that a secret sauce to multiplayer. I think. Well, no, but you know, we've to, known to make we've it, known for some to make time it on feel and to make it have that weight and to have that like the the, the latency issues and all of that stuff like. I don't know that's something you can just build into UE5. Like UE5 is I, a, is, I don't is know a, that you can visual I'm just saying that Marvel. If if I'm going to look at an Unreal Engine 4 game, mm -hmm. if you look at Final Fantasy 7 remake, which is an Unreal Engine 4 game, mm -hmm. it doesn't look, sound or feel like any other Unreal Engine 4 game. You know, there is a complaint going around right now in the games industry, which we had back in the Unreal Engine 3 days where mm -hmm. everything was high fidelity, but brown. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that, you know, if you're on Unreal Engine, it's a great engine, but certain things are going to look samey. Yeah. And I think that that's true to an extent. But if you have a talented developer you can either work around that. Uh, you know, I look at Final Fantasy VII Remake as an excellent example of, like, I've never seen an Unreal Engine 4 game look that fucking good. Sure. On, you know, I played it on regular SPS4. I was like, it fucking looked incredible. Like, it didn't look like any other Unreal Engine 4 game out there. It was fucking mind-numbingly beautiful. Um... You know, I look at Hogwarts Legacy, which is a beautiful Unreal Engine 4 looking game, right. but it's got an open world. And we know for a fact, Unreal Engine, not good at open world. But it's from a developer that is primarily known for making an open world game. Uh, they did the Disney Infinity franchise where they had open worlds. Sure. Pretty much exclusively. And clearly they have some technical, pardon the pun, wizardry chops because I was looking at their open world. I was looking for pop in. I was looking for that typical uh, Unreal Engine 4 where the model pops in and then it looks kind of untextured and then gets textures really sure. fast before you can blink your eye. And I wasn't really seeing any of that. Um, You know, it felt like a congruent open world, the likes of which we've seen in, you know, other modern open world games. But I think I, I think we've lost the plot here, um, <laughs> which is. 
I hope Halo Infinite continues because I've been playing sure. it almost weekly with Daniel in Forge and the maps that are coming out of the Forge community are just fucking phenomenal. I played a map last night with Daniel where it was banshees in a star field of asteroids and then the asteroids had like automated turrets on it. <laughs> So you got this effect of like flying through like an epic space battle when it was just the two of us doing like a King of the Hill thing. It was Crazy. stupid and amazing and awesome. Um, and I maybe mentioned on uh, a previous podcast, you know, there are maps now where with the with the custom gear mechanic that you can do in Halo Infinite uh, Forge where you can grab a piece of gear and you can like press it and then you can like warp between two different maps and or dimensions in it in a multiplayer setting that's just like clever and phenomenal um we played like a perfect recreation of donkey kong mountain from mario kart <laughs> uh just the other night we played a a fan-made recreation of the halo 2 famous map uh turf which is on the streets of new mombasa uh and it was fantastic um so it's really inspiring to see that the halo community in that respect is certainly not dead um and they actually just got a playlist matchmaking for forge games um just last week too which is a real nice surprise because i didn't know it was coming um, so I think Halo Infinite and its multiplayer are in a, in a good space, resounding yeah. success yeah. of a good space right now. And it would seem utterly, utterly feel foolhardy from either the top down of Microsoft or even from a Phil Spencer position to suddenly change Halo to an Unreal Engine 5 situation. Um, I don't think that's it for Infinite. I think Infinite should continue. I hope at the very least we get one more expansion, uh, that long rumored the endless one, um, and that it continues. I think it would be great if we got like a Halo spinoff from, you know, the Coalition Dev in Unreal Engine Five, sure. and it was like you know we had like an ODST thing, or you know there are a myriad of stories to tell in the Halo universe because it's fast. And you could tell these stories. You could do a third person shooter game. You could do a, you know, really anything. Um, but anyway, the Halo thing. So you brought it up and we talked for another 40 minutes <laughs> on stuff. I'm going to do we have more. Can I spin the ring? Spin the ring. OK. All right. We have landed uh back on video games so that's that's not gonna work fire life stories i know you got stuff nate hit me with it what what what, what stuff do you think i have oh wait my kiddos you went and to i disneyland yeah, my kiddos and i you went did, to disneyland you did the yes. star wars we did the star wars well i i did the star wars my kiddos yeah. did not, but it, it, my uh, we went on the uh, smugglers run. Yeah, and uh, what do you think? My my daughter did the uh, left or right. Okay, so that must have been something. that was bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was a gunner and I did fine in my position with that. But yeah, yeah, no, um, amazing, like. My, was my first experience with uh, walking into that realm of the park because I think uh, you had the blue milk, right? Oh yeah, I did. How was it? Uh, eh. Eh. Meh. You have the hiccups, my friend. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I see you like you're trying to like hurt. Yeah, hurt. Yeah. Got me some hiccups, but yeah, you know, like the blue mill was was all right like uh, there wasn't okay. like the uh the blue milk we had over at the uh the bar oh see i didn't get to do the bar well no the Did one you and i the one time. you and i went to like 
Oh, sorry. Um, never mind. The blue milk I had at the uh, Scum and Villainy in uh, Hollywood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing. Yeah, you were talking about. Yeah, that was yeah. that was much better than the blue milk. That, that was, was an offcast conversation. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, man, Nate but yeah, like no, I'm fucking like, drunk right now. <laughs> huh? I said Nate sound like a fucking drunk right yeah. now. Talking about places nobody's heard about, <laughs> hiccuping. Jeez. This man's a mess. <laughs> I wish I was. Um, but no, like the entire the entire ugh, Jesus. The entire back lot there was <laughs> I was amazed. Like Yeah, it's cool, right? Right. And uh, Did you get to see uh Kylo Ren and Stormtroopers intimidating civilians no um i did get to see ray and chewbacca on on the upper bridge by oh. the uh, uh millennium falcon oh i didn't i didn't get to see that so okay cool but and uh my my daughter got to personally meet darth vader because we were nice uh chase disney holders okay okay but nice. uh yeah like I, I i love the entire back lot like i having bit geez having been my first experience with that you know that that entire area was just amazing and yeah you had said like walking through that one archway from frontier land it just was like the right delineation mm-hmm so uh, like, yeah you have like you have like enough time to like get your spatial awareness and be like right. okay i'm transitioning lands yeah Oh, this land oh, is remarkably land is more re built. Yeah. <laughs> so more things to see, more things to look at. All right. So the family made it a point to uh, we we used our GD plus pass to get on uh, Smuggler's Run. Yep. And again, my daughter, my da my daughter was the right to left. My uh, sister in law was the up up and down. Uh, my wife and I were gunners, and two other people nice. that had never been on the ride ended up being the engineers and i feel bad for them oh no i feel bad for them Yikes. because <laughs> yeah like my daughter was like yeah. crash into everything left and right but yeah um as far as like the ride was concerned like that was that was really damn cool did you guys get to an asteroid field we did yeah that's super rare yeah as i was telling you when i i looked at all the behind the scenes stuff did you guys crash the Millennium Falcon in the end? Yes, we did. Nice. We had a similar experience. Then, and I was the one flying. We came skidding to a halt and they went, well, better luck next time. But at least you brought yeah. the cargo here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. Nice. Nice. Fantastic. So, yeah, we got. Uh, and did you? Hmm? Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say, did you did you get to do Rise of the Resistance? I did. I think I texted yeah, you. I was I was in you line did. for it. So, yeah. How was that, Nate? You overhyped that thing so much. Ah, oh, you overhyped it. Now, now, granted, it was really damn cool. Like I'm still wrapping my head around how all that stuff worked. But there was a lot of stuff you're like, sure, I don't get how that worked. And like, no, I could see how that works. Hmm. But I as, mean, I, I know how it all works now because I've seen all the behind the scenes. Sure, stuff, I but. didn't. Mm, but um, that was as an experience. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's top notch shit. Yeah. Yeah, it is very top notch shit. Several billion dollars worth of top right? notch shit right there. Now, uh, I don't I don't know yeah. what color you got into on your queue, but apparently it was like gray red blue green orange yeah i did it twice i don't really remember the colors so yeah like every everything down to running across the uh you know running across the runway into the uh the shuttle and just like standing in there it's like a subway car and i'm like oh yeah i'm i'm holding yeah. on to something and it's it's still uh um what would moving what, a flight sim yeah right Lights going well, over and the how top. and how and how about being in that 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 hangar with like all those stormtroopers and just the size of that fucking thing? 
I was disappointed when I walked out into that hangar yeah. and you're like the size of that thing. I walked out. I'm like, I see the, I see the effects. Well, obviously, right. But still, it's a big room. That's cool. That's cool. And having the uh, cast members go, all right, document your failures and move along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you like, think of the uh, the hover cart? Loved it. Loved it. Well, fucking cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> Running into other people from the same queue in different par- oh, yeah. parts of it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That's, that's cool, too. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I remember because I showed you the video of it when we were at the bar, when I met up with you Mm -hmm. there back November, you know, and I told you the video did not really do justice to the speed. Right. That you were moving. Right. Was I right about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some some good trucking. Right. I kind of got spoiled by your video. I was like, as soon as we slid out and I I saw the I saw the shoe that we hooked into. Mm hmm. Like, oh, this is where the drop is. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's 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 a neat drop. It's just, just, just and then right just back a great, into a flight sim. Yeah, like, so, it, so it's cool. just a great overall ride. Like, it, and it's yeah. funny because like I walked in, like we ran across, you know, you ran, ran across the airfield into the shuttle. It, mm-hmm. I got to the back side. Like, there's a left and a right side of the shuttle. And yep. I end up standing on the right side of the shuttle. And so when we stopped, I've got people that are like videotaping the right wall. Thinking mm-hmm. we're going to because, of course, if you're if you're going to enter the left door, you're going to exit the right door. Right. So when it opened <laughs> up on the left door, what a good little trick, right? right? <laughs> it was a great little trick. I was what like, what a cool move. Well done. Yeah. Mm hmm. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. So, and I finally when I when I got on Star Tours, it was one of the uh, one of the programs I've never seen. Yep, there's a lot of there's them. There's a lot apparently. of them now, right? <laughs> yeah. And my uh, my oldest daughter, who's pushing six six now, uh, was yeah high enough to get on everything, but um, the Incredit coaster. Okay. So she did her her uh, Matterhorn and then she went on Space Mountain okay. with me. Nice. Space Mountain's rough. She loved it. I feel like if you're old, <laughs> right? It's rough. It was rough on my body. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. She loved it. The only reason she oh didn't God. like anything was the person in front of her, the, the the kid in front of her was like, "I went on this last time I was here and I was so dark and it was so scary." scary and so it put it in her head hmm. so we got off the ride and like you did you like like the ride and she goes yeah i loved it i'm like nothing wrong with the ride and she goes well so it was kind of dark and she she keyed See, off i didn't know it was dark so when it went off that was the part that i immediately hated about it <laughs> it's not really knowing where i was on the fucking cart i was like oh yeah because I guess in my head, for some reason, That's when we were standing my favorite in line, part that, about it. Really, I don't like that at all. Because I don't know if you ever have you. Well, because you, you're not local, you've never ridden it while it was lit. No, and I'm and I'm told when it's lit and then on the Star Wars month in May, it's particularly cool because mm-hmm. it's like all lit up like yeah. you're flying through stars and stuff. I'm told by my in-laws who go all the goddamn time. Um that that's that's the time to go for that particular ride right but uh yeah but yeah. when it's lit up it's like okay it's a roller coaster okay so you did that you did matterhorn you did star wars stuff you guys do anything else um we did we did not do um big thunder mm, sadness yeah only so many coaster yeah yeah only so many uh rides we get right on with uh toddlers so yeah so did you guys do the uh the cars thing we never made it over to california california adventure mm, yeah okay okay that's fine so no worries well alrighty. so that 
that was good. I'm glad you got to uh, finally experience some stuff instead right? of, you know, work working. <laughs> <sighs> oh, gosh. Um, well, I see in the thing that I I posted fucking Tacoma <laughs> and then the poop emoji. Right. Uh, so it was my wife's 30th birthday. Um, so young. And she wanted to. Yeah, I know. Young. Um, and she wanted to. Eat at fucking old spaghetti factory mm -hmm. again. Um, and we ended up uh, needing to do it in to Tacoma. Because that's where her university is located. Mm hmm. And so I had a full early days worth of work. And because we weren't going to come back to pick, pick me up after school. So I rode with her at am like I, are my hiccups, 2 30. Hiccups no, it was a burp. Okay. Um, and so I rode with her at like two 30 in the afternoon after a full morning of work and chilled in a parking lot, <laughs> lot for like three hours. Well, she did her class, and then we we went in Old Spaghetti Factory, and folks met us there. And other than it was terribly busy, mm -hmm. um, it was fine, I guess. You know, it was, it was okay food, <laughs> not particularly my cup of tea. Um, you know, uh, but we were going back, and her parents had brought her a bunch of gifts, but then. And I didn't know this because I thought the evening was finally over after the dinner was over. And then Jessica was like, oh, well, I have like a ice cream cake at, at my home. So meet us back there and we'll have cake at, at our place. And I was like, I didn't know that, that was the plan. And then she's like, yeah, that's the plan. That's why I bought, bought the ice cream cake. And I was like, yeah, I get that. But I didn't know it was the plan. <laughs> I'm ready for the day to be done. I know it's your birthday, but, you know. And so her parents had like all these boxes and they were like super heavy. And I was like, what the fuck are in these? And so I was carrying them and I and I asked asked the the mom in law. I was like, hey, um, I'm gonna carry these like up the street several blocks. What the, what the fuck are in these? And she was like, Oh, it's a it's like bookshelf um bookends from from Disneyland. They're like stone. I was oh. like, cool, oh. great awesome i love it <laughs> uh and so we we're going up the street and she's trying to figure out where we parked um my plan was to have used my my compass tracker which i use several times at disneyland to like find my way through stuff uh back to our location but i couldn't because i was carrying all these boxes in front of me i'm going up the street and uh i hear jessica go oh look out as I step into something big and squishy and I slip and I almost throw her presence out in the street, but I catch myself. I was like, what the fuck? And she's like, I think you stepped in dog shit. And I looked at it and I looked at the size of this shit. And I said, no, that's human, hun. <laughs> oh, no. And, and she's like, oh, why would it be human? And I said, because we're in Tacoma. And she's like, oh. oh, so carrying all this fucking heavy book shows, like, walking back to the car, trying to fucking clamp my my shoe, which was one of my good Nikes, my dress Nikes. Thank you very much. With fucking human shit <laughs> for sure in it. I found some bark before we made it to the car and I was able to get some of it off. But it was like, ugh. And of course, it was a dry, windy night. So we get to smell it all the way back to the car. And then, of course, in the car and. You know, we get home and, and no. one foot hopping into the house, holding the other shoe, taking it to the shop sink. Uh, In-laws and relatives get there. and They're like, what are you doing with that shoe? And I was like, I'm washing it. They're like, why? And I'm, I'm burning it to shit. a crisp. Yeah. No, I wash the shit out of it and, you know, put it on a rack near the fire. Um, but yeah, so fucking Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> what 
or as we call it around here, to Compton. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much. Oh, the other life story I have, which is a new one. Uh, yesterday, my mom uh, texted me because um, they're staying in the mother-in-law's apartment of the old house that they sold because they're still moving some of their shit out. Right. And the new owners are being super gracious. Um, But she called me and she was like, hey, do you want this? And it sends me a picture. And it's like my old Nintendo 64. And I was like, (laughs) yes, "Yes, thank you. And my original Xbox. And I was like, yes, 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 I want all of those things. And she's like, well, pick it up to diet or I'm sending it to Goodwill. And I'm like, fuck. (laughs) So I tool on over there and stuff and I get the stuff. And um they're like, hey, do you want to see what they're doing, what the new owners are doing with the house? And I was like, OK. And so they sure, took, took me on a tour yeah. with the house and it's basically unrecognizable. They've knocked down walls instead of carpet. They've like poured this like weird blue laminate see through. Right. Kind of looks like the ocean kind of thing yeah. going on. Clearly, the new owners have money. Um, But yeah, it was kind of interesting. It was kind of weird. It was kind of uh oddly nostalgic to like walk through a home i lived for many 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 years and many many podcasts right. and and to see someone bastardize it so badly with what whatever uh, architecture i, mean, I actually kind of i actually kind of liked the blue uh fl- laminate or resin flooring i didn't think it went with anything else with the house so hopefully they're going to paint and do some other shit too i would imagine um yeah but uh, yeah, uh, met one of the kids that I guess is going to be living there. And then the the new owner came by and just so happened he grew up in a small town right next to where my mom grew up. So there was some weird like coincidental stuff happening there. It was a nice fella, mm-hmm. you know, probably probably around your age, I guess. Um, my cat looks grumpy as shit. It's holding up a cat, folks, for for the audio listener at home. Um, yeah, it was just kind of interesting, like going going through the old place and whatnot. Um, and then uh, my folks, not so much asked as said, I'm hosting their Super Bowl for them. <laughs> oh, fun! So I guess they're coming over tomorrow. Um, I had to figure out how to get the Super Bowl on my wife's Xbox One downstairs. Um. Yeah, so that's happening. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's basically my life stories right now. Okay. Spin. 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 Okay. Damn it! No, it keeps landing on video games. Nope, that's life again. Entertainment. Nope, that's life again. All right. Entertainment. Water. What's what's, what's entertainment? Water? Oh, good. Thanks. Uh, what do we got in here? Uh, <laughs> there's, there's there's one there's one story there's only no, one story there's a couple no there's three stories there's only one you care about right <laughs> well i'm gonna lead with the bad so then we can end with the good sure um according to more reports that are bad for rick and morty mm-hmm. uh the other co-creator of Rick and Morty, Dan Harmon apparently has not been on speaking terms right. with uh, Justin Roiland since season three, which that, is like the the shit show a has more deck ago. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Um, so he's apparently been recording from home since season three, which was like eight years ago at this point, because uh, it's been a really long time between seasons. Um, and then other people within the Rick and Morty studio have stated that Justin Roiland has done sexual harassy things right. towards them. Uh, and just, you know, you can look at it two ways, you know, as I've been, as I said last time, you can look at it as, okay, well now the studio is piling on because why not? Or it can be like, well, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fingers right. being pointed. So maybe this is not so good. Um, 
and I'll uh, leave it at that because we spent a long time talking about it in the last episode. Right. Um, Disney CEO Bob Iger has stated he's open to selling Hulu, mm. <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> How do you feel about that one, Nate? Oh, do I get? Do I keep having to pay more for my plus subscription? Sub sub uh, subscription. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> everybody's raising their rates or doing crazy right. Netflix things. Um, so that's the thing. But the thing we really care about here in entertainment is that the peripheral on Amazon Prime has been renewed for a second season. As Nate leaves the camera frame. Sorry, had had to let the cat out. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Fair enough. Yes. 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 Thank God. Yes. Thank God. Thank God. That series got the a absence series. of Westworld. This is the next best thing, right? <laughs> and it left on such a weird cliffhanger thing, too. So I'm mm -hmm. real glad that that's we're going to get more. And now, like, so, it, now I'm going like, how do we how do they restart the season, the uh, second season for it? I have no idea, but I'm happy it's there. I'm hoping we're just hearing about this news late and it was really renewed all along and right. they've been deep into production right. on it. And it's not like we'll get it in 2024 <laughs> kind well, of thing. Like the West world shit like was enough. People have signed up for a, uh, you know, petition to bring it back, back a second series. So now we'll do yeah. it. I mean, I hope so. I hope so. Um, but speaking of stuff and entertainment, mm -hmm. what you been watching, Nate? I'm not watching anything. Not watching anything. Not watching anything. You haven't even checked out The Last of Us on HBO. I, I have not, because damn it, I Nate. can't watch it with my children. Okay, they sleep sometimes. Right. You have a phone. I wake up at five, four o'clock in the morning. So by the time, like, I fall asleep before my children do. But yeah, I, but I, I, I see you home at like I two and three in the afternoon. Start sometimes. watching Last of Us. I think you should because it sounds like Dame's going to be on sure. the show. Sure. Next time, and he'll want to want to talk about it, and he will chastise the shit out of you for having not watched it. <laughs> chastise away. <laughs> But no, it'll be interesting to get your perspective since mm -hmm. you didn't play the games. Right. Um, and not that didn't. I am. Wasn't capable of. True. Right. True. Um, I mean, they'll be on P the first game will be on PC here in the next like month or something. Sure. So that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I very much look forward to your perspective on it as a piece of TV. And you have rather apps. than a piece of adapted game content. Now, once again, it was burps. Very yeah. different. Yeah. Very different from the fucking spaz attack you've got going on. over there. <laughs> um, I guess speaking of the last of us TV show in broad terms, because I have been watching it and we got an extra episode on Friday because it's normally a Sunday show and ain't nobody want to fight for airtime with the Super Bowl <laughs> tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Because you're not going to win that Which, fight. My um, team's not in it. So, Oh, speaking of that. Yeah. So the that game that they lost, uh, which I hosted for my folks over here because they don't really have TV uh, and their current predicament kind of being sort of over here. Um, they were rooting for your team, by the way. Really? Because you you had asked, surprised. who are they rooting for? Yeah. And then the, 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 it's the Bengals, right? Yeah, Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, I I had asked them. I think when you had texted or discorded me it, and I said, "Oh, I'll ask," and I did. And I I, don't, I never ever responded to you. Sorry about that. Um, but they were like, "Oh, we want the Bengals to win because we want somebody else to go to the fucking Super Bowl." <laughs> and I was like, "Fair enough." <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> We didn't. Sorry. I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. 
Uh, I was downstairs like making dinner or something when all that shit was going on with like overtime. And I was like, oh, my God, it's tied. Oh, it's an overtime. I was like, oh, no. well, that's a good game, at least. Everyone to overtime. You know, not from your perspective, because you would have preferred them to win before overtime. No, you know? it never and went to overtime. Got... Oh, that's right. They scored right in that last like. It... Yeah, last second year. or whatever. It was. Last year went to overtime. <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to. Trying to talk some little tiny no. parcel bit no, of sports no, ball. No, no, I was doing dishes. No, the TV was off no, on the left. Nope. <laughs> this is not a fake it till you make it. Um, I don't think I mentioned last podcast because I only got into it. I think on the off. Mm hmm off podcast weekend. So I checked out a new Apple TV show called Shrinking. You, you did mention it. Oh, I did mention it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I got the wife into it. Mm -hmm. um, it continues to be fantastic, heartwarming, uplifting, a little bit heartbreaking, and pretty goddamn funny. Um, it's kind of a gem. I look forward to it every week now. And uh, Apple, the only sad part Apple is... Apple TV's sort of... been kind of like knocking it out of the park. It's it really I, I've said it again and I've, uh, I've said it again and I'll continue to say it again. That's not where I was going with it, but that's where I ended up. Right. Um, they remind me of an early HBO where every sure. single thing that they put out is just. You might not be that interested in it to begin with, but it's really fucking well made yeah. and it's shot beautifully. Yeah, and it's wrong. just it has that. Quality to it and they've really pursued that in every single thing that i've ever seen on that platform you know and why not they've got the fucking money to throw at it right <laughs> you know but it's a distinction from like say amazon which also has the money to throw at it but you know they don't on all of their shows sure you know wildly varying perhaps much like yeah. netflix in that regard it's but it's like Apple, you know. a Apple seems to have some some sort of sort of sort of discretion. They have obviously some kind of quality control, right? Or something or, you Whereas know, like they, they must have Netflix is like, wait, people like this green light it for three seasons. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's so silly. And if they really like it, split the next season into parts. Sure. We need people to keep their accounts. <sighs> oh, my God. I guess speaking of Netflix, uh, Netflix has been slowly implementing their password sharing crackdown. Um, it just hit Canada, apparently. Yep. And. There's a funny meme that I saw going around. That was uh, a picture of uh, Obi-Wan from the Obi-Wan um, recent Disney Plus TV show where he's got the blue light on him from his lightsaber and he's like right. crying. And then it's like Canadian user logs into Netflix. You cannot log into Netflix because your password is shared and you need to log into your home IP address. Mm -hmm. And then the picture of Obi-Wan of that my friend is truly dead. <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's just silly. Like it's super silly, and they're gonna they're cutting themselves off at the feet. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it it's just, and the way they're going about it is so draconian too. Right. So have you have you heard the rules for mm -hmm. this? Oh yeah. So so if you haven't heard at home, um. When it eventually hits in the U.S., and believe me, it's going to hit because it's hit all the other countries. You will They're be limited to one. Uh, streaming. So you'll be you'll be able to have multiple profiles if they're in the same household, right. meaning IP, IP address mm -hmm. and geographic location. If you are using it on your phone, you're allowed to use it on your phone. However, your phone must will have must will have checked in with the Netflix servers from the home IP address once every 30 days, yep. which kind of fucks you 
if you're on a long distance business travel. Mm -hmm. 100%. Unless you send it as a trusted device. Um, There's caveats there, but yeah. Sure. Still stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, If you want to share your password and the IP address be different, it's going to be additional $3.99 per 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 pro blah, fuck me yeah per profile charge to per the profile charge to the profile that logs in not your own i mean i guess right but here here's where here's where i feel disney made a really really smart move they were like we're gonna do seven profiles mm-hmm. they can be anywhere in the goddamn world mm-hmm. because we know people have families you have seven. If you want more, you can pay for more. Right. <laughs> Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But I don't yeah, know. We'll see. Give a decent amount for, you know, again, for the base profile, like Netflix. Say, hey, here, here's four. Yeah. You'll go That's over silly. four, you pay for more. You know, or you could even be a little greedy with it and just be like, drop it to three. Sure. You know, or you could do you could do it tiered because they already have a bunch of tiers, right? Mm-hmm. You know, your basic bitch thing that has ads now or whatever is like one. If you want the HD, no ads, you get two. I already pay for it. You ads. want the 4K, you get three. Yeah. You know, just I don't know. It's fucking it's fucking silly. Yeah, it's fucking silly. Yep. Um, well, that's what I have for entertainment. Um, which leads us to the final topic Tech. of technology. Mm. So <clears throat> I've been saying since even before the new year, 2023 is the year of the well, AI assistant. This is this is Tim saying, I told you so. I am fucking t- saying I told you yeah. so, everyone. <laughs> uh Microsoft just invested ten billion dollars into OpenAI, mm-hmm. which is the Chat GPT and maker. Chat GPT. Yeah. Um, in the same day, this is the morning headline. Then the following headline later that afternoon mm-hmm. was uh, Microsoft integrates OpenAI's Chat G- GTP into, into Google Bing, Bing yeah. Search today. Today. Um, you do have to click a separate thing to opt into this thing. Oh, it's an opt in, not an opt out. It's, it's, it's an opt in right now. Okay, good, good. Um, I looked at it for a second when I was on my windows machine earlier, which I guess is another thing we didn't talk about, but I guess we're in it now, Mm -hmm. um, where I had it working for a bit and I was like, Ooh, I'm going to use Bing. I use this fancy, fancy AI search. And then they're like, opt in here. And they're like, opt in here to join the queue to opt in. I was like, okay, well, that's something, but okay. I'm going to um, wait in line to wait not... in line to wait in line. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> to not be outdone, um, Google announced, like, pretty much within the same hour that uh starting to that same day right. google is introducing google bard yeah. which is based on their lambda ai which they announced over two years ago um and that you can interface like, with yeah the lambda right the lambda that caused a mass migration of people leaving google yeah because they thought it was sentient right that's that that lambda you know that yeah. one that one um i have not tried google bard yet uh but what i've heard because this is a couple of days ago i think it was tuesday when this was announced and this is now saturday uh people were showing i was seeing this on reddit people were showing the google bard responses on things and google bard uh was then later stated by by google that 20 percent of its answers will be wrong right for the next six months and i was like oh that's weird and i saw some fucking hilarious stuff <laughs> on reddit they're like google bard tell me how to bake a cake and they and it was some weird fucking shit it was like get you know four cups of flour get get two eggs Mm -hmm. 
cut off a finger, stir, whisk, put on the grill. Wait, what? <laughs> what about a finger? What? <laughs> it was absolutely silly. Right. Um, but the fact of the matter is, this is the year of AI assistance. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean AI assistants like we have Google Assistant and fucking Siri and no. Alexa and Cortana. All these not assistants. We're, we're, we're talking Big Skynet. Speed. Yeah. We're talking some form of algorithmic evolving conversationalist mm-hmm. computer speak with humans. This is the year we're in. Kill it. And for better or for worse, we're fucking here. Kill it with fire. It's happening now. It's happening now. now. No, kill it. The fact that do the fact not, that Microsoft do just not dumped plug it, ten do billion not dollars into this. Plug it into the inter- internet. It's too late. It's already plugged in. It's it's happened. It's done. Just be glad those Tesla bots aren't out yet. And Tesla bots can do things like repair other robots because it gets gets to that phase, which is coming. Mm -hmm. Fuck, you know. So I saw another cool thing actually this morning. Um. I've said before on the show that uh, I watch a YouTube channel called Quarter Crew. Mm-hmm. Where they're VFX artists and they break down VFX and they figure out how things are done. And occasionally they have interviews with super professional VFX artists. And uh, today's episode was particularly cool because they had the uh, lead director from um, Weta Digital who worked on a little film called Avatar The Way of Water. Little home. Um, yeah. And they were talk, and they were talking about uh, the new technologies that had to be invented for the CGI in this thing. And they invented two, two, two huge new things in in CGI technology. They uh, have a program. I'm going to butcher this, paraphrase this because I don't remember it exactly because I watched it this morning. Um, but it was like depth perspective map recording or something okay and so what that means for movie people is the computer now has an ability within camera of a second camera shooting in conjunction with a normal camera like say you've got a person on a green screen right and it has the ability to determine placement of the uh of the filmed like the person in mm-hmm. relation to what's going to be there in the green screen. Okay. And then can place that into the depth appropriately, mm-hmm. which cuts out composite time. Like mm-hmm. pretty much it's just mm-hmm. done. Right. It's just done in frame and it's done and you don't have to have a person do it manually. Um, that was a huge technology evolution um, because one of the ways that they showed how that they were film how they were filming this this film in as a vast difference from the old avatar film or even mm-hmm. modern films was um have you did you, i can't remember did you say you saw the film yeah okay yeah avatar so, two? yes you know yeah and so you know how and if and for those at home if you watch like trailers there's a lot of interaction between uh cgi blue people and water mm-hmm. and then also other humans and so what they would creatures. do yes. in, a, in a scene that had all of those elements was because of that depth mapping thing that they already had from the, from the shoot, um, they were able to then take out specific parts of the actual human performance mm-hmm. when they were interacting with water that's fake water, that's CGI water. And so they could like remove specifically only a foot or a hand and all that sort of stuff that would be a CGI water that's done with a simulation. Sure. Rather than they have to 
CGI out the entire person. Right. Put Inst- them into the water. Right. Because instead the CGI of, thing is instead the thing of that's doing an entirely CGI water environment. Yes. It's we're gonna put you in a pool and we're going to crop out the one piece of mm-hmm. person in water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that was a, that that was a big thing because sure. they have all of these compositing layers and all of that can just be done now. Um, and then the second thing that they had was their water sim thing. Um, you know, there's been water sims in CGI before, mm-hmm. um, but theirs was like, you know, they're like, you know, before an old water sim is like, all right, you have to have a water sim for the waves crashing. You have to have a particle sim for if someone's coming out of the water. Right. You have to have another sim for if they go into the water, all these physics sims and stuff. And then they said that they came up with a machine learn algorithm right that stitched all of the different sims together so that they would talk to each mm-hmm. other so it would say like okay we have cgi foot here hitting wave that would then communicate sure. to the wave sim to then displace it properly In- around uh, the well, foot yeah basically instead of doing reactive design it was an if this then yes. that yeah yes yes in a big huge server farm manner right and then they were saying you know they're like don't get us wrong it was the hardest thing we had to do on this and you still yeah among all that you still have to actually render realistic water which has been Mm -hmm. a bane (laughs) yeah in the cgi Um, world for a while like they finally got fire and water is but still the, one of those things that it's like, I, we don't get it. Like, we can't get the mm-hmm. volumetric measurements for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was really cool learning that. And the other kind of tag on effect of this, uh, uh, this data, this information that I was seeing in this video was we know that Weta Digital is now owned by Unity, mm-hmm. the game engine developer. And I'm like, I can't wait to see <laughs> how some of this insane Weta digital technology is going to make it into a game engine. Right. Because you can bet your ass that's what Unity is 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 gunning for sure. to compete with Unreal. Why, why wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I don't know. I just thought all that kind of stuff was like super cool. I love stuff like that. I love behind the scenes. I love seeing how the how the sausage is made, so to speak, <laughs> especially if you see a new sausage that you're like, oh, my God, how was that sausage made? You know, talking about movies. Right. Um, so I saw, thought that was super cool. Um, yeah. Uh, small news uh, for the Mac people. We actually attempted to record onto it tonight, but it is not. It's not interfaced properly with my recorder, but Skype finally has an M1 native Mac version. Okay, so you're it's not you're in... not running on it now. No, okay. we we cut that. That's why I recalled you because the recorder wasn't. It was only picking up you. Gotcha. It wasn't picking up my input. Well, damn. Uh, so it's like half of the way there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Skype M1 only preview. The, only the um, people that are watching live, you know, like Killer Cow. I mean, he's probably asleep. Yes, he's got us. Yes, it's like three over there, still lurking. <laughs> um, but we'll, yeah, we'll no. see the difference. Uh, yeah. I was, I was shocked by this mostly because every time I update Skype, which is basically a few days before I record an episode, so it's often. <laughs> I go and I Google, is Skype finally M1 native? Because it is the one major app that I use on my Mac routinely that doesn't have an Apple Silicon native compile. Right. And is run through a time. Uh, uh, just in time. Time. Yeah, just in time. Uh, Rosetta translation right. of Intel x86 code. And and don't get me wrong, it runs great. Yeah, so like it's any, fantastic. Anyone that wonders where that that statement came from, when you hear JIT JIT compilers, it's just in time. I've I've not heard it yeah. as JIT before, but I do understand. Yeah. you know that is just in time. It was so a Java cool. thing. Yeah. Mm. Java. Um, yeah. So if you want, there's a preview version. It's available for M1 Mac. 
Uh, I fiddled around with it. It indeed does work. And I used it to make the first call to Nate. It does work. Um, mm -hmm. It is smoother than the Intel version on Mac. Or Which at least doesn't play Apple well Silicon with Skype. Mac, for sure. Apparently. Uh, it doesn't play well with my, my uh, what's this called? Audio hijack. Right. Um, and it's possible I may need to reconfigure audio hijack for that particular version of Skype. Okay. Um, we'll see. But the point is they made the transition. This was something I've said before. Uh, I'd seen in the developer logs, like the Skype developers, like right. over a year ago, were like, we're not going to make that version. <laughs> They're like, we're not doing it basically. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that yeah, fucking sucks. It was, it was a, was the juice worth the squeeze? And. I mean, that just tells they, me. They figured that it was. So that, that's, that's a good just, thing. That just that's tells a good thing going forward. People... That there's, yeah, there's some confidence yeah. in the Mac platform going forward. Well, and it, it's also probably a numbers thing, too. There's probably enough people who use Skype on Mac. Sure. And maybe they use it for business too. I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, like you could I, have I a number. You could have num num number of people of on Mac that are using Skype, but are there a number of people on Mac using Skype that are unsatisfied to promote these changes? Sure, right? Because I would say largely, because just you know, good enough has gotten me by on Intel a lot version. of products. Yeah, Skype is just good enough on uh, Apple Silicon Mac right now. Sure. But the fact that there is a version finally, and I have it, mm -hmm. and it works, uh, makes me excited. Yeah, makes me. I can't excited. wait till we can do a podcast with it where I don't, I, I, I don't get frame scripts, uh, frame skips from you. Oh, do you? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> I wonder if that's because it, it's probably encoding through. Sure, because I mean it would have to. Obviously, it have to be obviously it's not a bandwidth old... issue on my end. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it can't be on mine. I'm looking at my upload right now. This is only like 350 kilobytes. Right. It's nothing. It's right. nothing for upload. Yeah. So um, for me to get notable, notable, notable skips, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have much else to talk about aside from my, uh, my PC problems. Yeah. Which I guess you could, you could maybe give me a little bit of, Nate food diagnosis. Yeah, get Legos. It's it's not a it's not a it's not a push thing. <laughs> no, uh, I think I sent you that. I, yeah, I, so yeah, Tim, Tim, for all the times he made fun of me for my video card being like uh, just being spoopy. Um, I thought it was a connection issue, so I had a Lego reinforcement on the back end um and yeah so he he messaged me messages me today and he's like so yeah i'm getting this weird like snow 1960s <laughs> yeah and i remember it was this. scary yeah. i tried to take a picture but then the screen flipped off yeah and this this was the last thing that before i like went down for a while i was like oh well that's exactly what happened to my my uh video card and i ended up running a uh utility that um uninstalls like forcefully rips every you know like in um speaking of that utility that you directed mm -hmm. me to it doesn't do that what did it do for you not not without paying mine didn't require me to pay well this one does oh okay yeah yeah mine like just so what I just, got that utility to do sub zero ripped everything from the spine out of <laughs> old drivers. Buddy. Nice. I appreciate that reference. Yeah. Um, so what that program that you sent me did do was it did locate more drivers that were out of date. Right. Um, and it did allow me to update them. However, I had to do it individually. Yes. I wanted to do them all in one go. No, it wanted money. But nowhere in that thing was a uninstall driver. Oh, see what I did. It was so just unless like, your version's older and used to do that, I I literally cut and paste the link that was sent to me. 
Cool. So, well, yeah, mine was. Just my like, guess is it's been updated. Mine was like obliterate everything Nvidia on your hard drive, and I'm like, yes, do it, nuke. <laughs> and I had the yeah, same. I, I had the same situation as you, where I was like, I have an onboard to the uh, onboard to my motherboard um, video card. I think I understand that. You mean like it plugs in to the side of the motherboard yeah you had it you, had, you said yeah. you had an hdmi on the motherboard itself that was going to a monitor oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so i have like, an hdmi on the motherboard which is the thing that <laughs> guess what time it is folks midnight it's not time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i have i had an a, a hdmi on my motherboard that i plugged into my monitor so that i i could at least boot up um and I had pulled my video card out of my system and then ran that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hey, hang on. So I just looked at my phone. We have he's I don't know why he didn't post this in the chat. We have texts from Daniel. Yeah. He posted things. So if you looked no, in the to chat, my phone, if you looked in the chat, he said he had sent Did messages they? to you. Oh, Christ. OK, well, hang on. We're going to take a, a quick diversion into this since he did send me stuff. OK, turn your lights on. I'm going to go pee. I'm looking for them. You're going to what? I'm going to go pee. OK, go for it. Okay, right, I'm going to try not to do dead space here. Ho ho. I guess speaking of Dead Space and Metro Prime Remastered real quick, um, my one, my two complaints of Metro Prime Remastered, um, there should be more save points. It, it's a 21 year old game design, and especially in the late game, there are some long, brutal stretches without saves. They could have added a couple more saves, just saying. Um, and then two and I noticed this is um, your beam weapon in Metroid Prime used to emit light in the original version, like on the walls when you shot the projectiles. Uh, it, for some reason, doesn't in the remaster. I can't help but it feel like it was just like a, like a weird missed thing that I hope is patched. Uh, but other than that, it's perfect. Uh, speaking of remasters, uh, or I guess remakes, Dead Space remake, um, I did not finish it. I'm on chapter 11, so I'm close. Um, I'm a ba Dead Space super fan, and I'm playing it on Series X, which is the better running version. Uh, PS5 and PC finally got their patch. Uh, they removed the VRSS, VRSS, VRS from it. Um, I couple of complaints on dead space is i feel like some of the boss reworks in zero g i see you are... talking but what i miss uh i decided to vamp okay. before i went into the daniel questions um i was just talking about metroid prime and then the dead space <laughs> remake and my well, minor niggles at least it wasn't with sonic them. not this week folks <laughs> by sonic frontiers everyone okay. So season pass. Come now the it. question is for <laughs> Daniel. Do we want to cut the podcast here and answer him in the outtakes? Or do we want to answer him now? Uh he's got three things. Okay. I, I say let's just power through it. Um he said three things he can think of. Games uh rainbow six siege year eight season one operation commanding force is coming soon uh teaser of latest op is going to be an attacker it's a siege thing it's fine here daniel clip it uh <laughs> sons of the forest is dropping the 23rd of february in early access sons on of the Steam. what sons of the forest sequel to the forest which is a first person survival horror crafting game that's extremely good okay yet again <laughs> what's number three? Uh, early access 
early access for now so as to not delay the game any further. Okay. And game will stay at $30 throughout the early access and release, which is surprising. Um, and then his third thing was Bungie raised 200 or 200K for earthquake relief in Syria and Turkey. Because that's what Bungie does. They, they, they do do that. They, they, they fundraise well. So uh, they do. Question so one, question two. Um, what are you doing next? Uh, what are you doing next Saturday, Tim? Me? Yeah. Why? Because I'm not podcasting with you, but maybe Dame can. But it's we're bi-weekly, so it's two weeks from now. Right, for you and me. Right, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to get in on the snide and do a little half, like a .5 podcast with Tim. No, I talk to him again. It sounds like he's going to come for the next bi-weekly. Oh, okay, cool. That that's what I was saying way earlier in the show. Cool. All right. Well, we will talk about your <laughs> questions uh, in two weeks, hopefully, if you remember. And <laughs> yeah, I remember. All right. Well, this is this is the end of the show. This has been the Fork in Your Ear podcast. I'm your host, as always, author, podcaster, gamer, occasional why, why, gamer. Why, why do you sound? Why do you so sound so ashamed of me? <laughs> Honestly, it's because your mic is cutting in and out a little bit, and I know it's on the record, so you sound like you're drunk, but I can see that you're not. So it's like, I don't say ashamed is like what I'm hearing. Well, it might be a combination of both, but oh. Well, there you go. I'm not ashamed. I might have I might have pre gamed before this episode, and then have been gaming uh, gaming on since. I have been gaming. Have been gaming since. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. So, editing night. Dear outro, Nate. <laughs> not really, because I kept talking. So it's just gonna <laughs> be the show. I don't. I don't have an outro. Because you know, you all you know, don't have an outro. You all you all know where to find me. I'm I am the Nate Fu. Uh, you can find me in the um, Fork uh, Discord at uh, Nate Fu, and you can find me at Twitter on GG Nate Fu for as long as Twitter yep. stays alive. I mean, I don't think Twitter is going anywhere. No, it's not. I have my nigg niggles with that, as you would as you would put it. So, yeah, I do say that a lot, don't I? I, do. I don't know where that comes I from. I don't know either. It feels like it feels like a grandma thing, to be honest. It it I does. Feel like one of my grandmas it said does, that. and it's it's so butts right up against a racist term that I'm just like, <sighs> I know what it butts up against. Right. But I've been saying it forever, and it doesn't mean that to my knowledge. I know. I hope I hope it's, it doesn't. It's like if I like, you're like so. Tim, you're such a crackle. Right. <laughs> Sorry, sir. That's trademarked by Sony. And that's the orange streaming platform. You can't say that. But yeah. Uh until two weeks. True, until two weeks. Hopefully we have Dame. If you have Dame and yeah, uh, I'm great. gonna do this again, I might just like <laughs> peace out. Have a uh, Nate free podcast. Oh, you don't want to do the next podcast? No, I'd love to do the next podcast. I'm just saying. I'm preemptively I'm, by your I'm preemptively giving myself an out. Okay. <laughs> Cuz you like right. you and Dame are going to be like platform specific stuff that I'm like, yeah, like Nintendo's cool and yeah, yay, PlayStation. Have you done a sh have you done a show with Dame? Nate? I have one. Okay. Was it not a good experience? It was a great experience. Just okay, cool. Just saying. So sign yourself up for another one. I, I am. <laughs> Jeez, says the man already talking about a preventive, preventive out, preventive. I don't know words. All right, we out. Thank you for listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. You can find our podcast at www.dynamicworksproductions.com. 
feel free to email us at dynamicworks at mac.com. Armada, the voice of Guybrush Street, but you're listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. The Citadel Arrival is the first installment in a series of epic science fiction short stories reminiscent of the pulp fiction style. It's a fast paced story that will take you through twists and turns that you will not expect until they are thrust upon you with all the force, excitement, and chaos of a plasma cannon blast. The story follows Katarl, a nobody cog in the working wheels of a futuristic society run completely by Megacorp, a corporation that carefully runs and manages the lives of the people living under its sphere of power. On one of Katarl's few and far between days off from work, an outing he had hoped would be fun and relaxing turns into an explosive adventure that drags him kicking and screaming into situations and challenges that will make him question every aspect of his life. Watch this colorful tapestry unfurl as Katarl and his newfound allies find their way through this classic, yet oddly surprising tale of good and evil where nothing is quite what it appears to be. That's The Citadel Arrival by author Tim K. Trotter, available right now on Amazon Kindle Store and iTunes iBookstore for only $2.99. Hi, sir. Hi. There we go. Let's turn that camera a little bit. I weird. Know you guys. I'm so far away from all of you. That was. I apologize, everybody. Uh, I did not expect. Oh, what happened? Why is Skype opening on my little laptop? Oh no, I can. I can hear. Okay, hang on. Okay. All right. I need need to check something real quick. Looks like I'm getting you. But I'm not getting me in my recorder. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'll swap Skypes. I just needed to run a test. Anyway. This is the M1 version. I'm on. Oh, gotcha. And it's in preview for whatever that was. Um, it's picking you up. So that's good. Good. Makes me. Because I see your. I see you the in the meter. In the recorder, but that I don't see awful. it. Why? Why? Oh, God damn it, why? Fuck me. What'd you do? Um, You're looking up. Did you monitor today? No. Okay. Okay, that didn't come through. Let's see if this comes through. Damn it. Okay. I need to figure out where the fuck that's coming from real quick. It's fine. I'm going to swap to the unfortunate Intel version of Skype. BRB. You there? I am. <clears throat> I am here. Your camera's oh, off. Fuck's sake. Oh, <laughs> I know why. Testing, testing. Okay, I see meters on me. Talk so I can look at your meter. No, I don't want to talk. Okay. If you don't want to talk, we don't have to do a show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talking is part of the podcast, right? I mean, it's uh, it's pretty much mandatory. <laughs> 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 
There we go. Success. So apparently when uh, I was doing some charity streams and whatnot, I was on standby just in case someone needed to go live for uh, Guardian's mental health. Uh, okay. I set up all my OBS alerts and everything for that stream. Okay. And there's an audio alert that is buried somewhere in my settings that is playing air horns at very loud volume. Continuously? Uh, no, when someone, because uh, GMH is currently streaming live. Oh, so when someone re so redeems you're, you're, you're an air horn, jump things, scare. So you're getting random air horns. Yeah. You know, I feel like you brought that on yourself with all the yays. Yay! Submitted me to. Submitted me to? I don't know if that's the right. Subjected. Subjected. Yeah. That's the like word that. you're looking for. Um, are we uh, are we streaming or are we not streaming? I don't care. I'm uh, I'm dressed and cleaned and whatnot. So up to you. If you want to stream, we can stream. If not, no skin off my back. I mean, I'm ready to do it, but we may get a random air horn. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens i will call it out and because it will show up in the stream but it probably won't show up in our uh audio feed i mean you certainly can if you want uh, I'm damn it I'm, my foot's caught on a cable that i don't need to be stepping on mm. fair enough um i need a bio break before we begin proper so well you figure that oh. out I'm well, I'm, go... I, I figured it out, but go bio. Damn it. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. So what did you decide, my extremely white lit friend? <laughs> well, you complained about my lighting last week, so there. <laughs> we weren't even streaming. <laughs> right? You're like, well, he's so dark, and we weren't even streaming, so. Yeah. Well, uh, I we're think live. Overall, your complexion is. Yeah. Oh, we are. Yeah. 
We're live live. We're live live. Uh, we're on the intro screen, but we're live live. Oh, the rolling thing? Uh, oh, Which... well, no, the intro screen. Okay. And I see audio. I don't need to do an audio check at this point because we've done this enough times. I know what I see. Should be fine. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully we don't get any air horns on the stream side. We do. It'll be funny for anyone that is happens to be uh, sitting in stream. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. These are dirty as fuck. Creator dashboard. All right. I already updated that. Yeah. I got the alert that you were streaming. What is that rascal up to? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, just now. Yeah, because I went live. Because you did the thing. Yeah, because I did the thing. Fair enough. I I don't think I can update the, uh, that alert, but I can up straight, uh, up, update the, uh, stream. Motherfucker. God damn it. (sighs) Fair enough. Good outtakes this week. I've got it in pop out. I assume you're rolling on your back end. Yeah, I'm rolling on my back end. I've got the, uh, the little mini laptop up and running for once. Oh, so now this should sh- show how much I've been at my desk, even though I've been fucking around with this PC for the last two days. The ring has not moved since the last <laughs> cast. It's still over here on the left instead of a <clears throat> little peg up here. Okay. So. Yeah, I guess I'm uh, I'm ready to roll whenever. All right. Go. Oh. Yes. Okay. Let me turn that down in case I accidentally hit it again. Okay, I think we're good. Um, Any uh, pre-show? I don't think so. Okay, cool. Was there pre-show you needed to pre-show? Did you need to... Wax sadness about oh no I wouldn't playing at the Super Bowl tomorrow. <laughs> we can get into that during live stories. Oh, I I asked my uh, my folks because I hosted that game at my place for some reason for my folks no, no, and I'm save, apparently that's, also no no that's that's them. this is podcast material so let's okay, save okay. that for let's save that for the go live. All right, let's uh, hold on. Let me uh, close this down. I have the podcast, or sorry, the Discord up. I have swapping my monitor from the fucked up PC to the Mac now. Mm. Okay, I'm sure that'll be a discussion. Yes, help. Help? (laughs) Help me. Help me. Okay. All right, have the Discord open, and... Four, three... Two, one, cut in. Oh, we're doing a cut in? Oh, I thought we were, I thought the little blippy thingy was going to happen in the Twitch player. Well, no, we do the cut in and then we do the blippy thing, right? Oh, okay. (laughs) Three, two, Two, one, one, cut cut in. in. Intro roll rolling. There we go. Stopping things. Hitting the stop button. I've got 10 more seconds till the three hour mark. We did it. We did an episode under four hours. (laughs) 